this. Parts. I've never done whole parts. Oh, they take little tiny pieces. There won't even be a scar. I think I found the problem. Oh, come on, you're the doctor. Everyone, lights out and quiet. Just break his ankles. I don't know what the issue is. Greetings, everyone. Welcome, <laughs> welcome back, uh, listeners, to another episode of the Media Morgue, where movies and all entertainment comes to be examined. I am your host. Um, oh, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, good. Don't do. No, yeah. don't. Yeah, Sitting Wolverine, in. and I'm joined by my fellow surgeons of cinema. Uh, I am the GTA Six leaker whose uh, house was bombed. Um, unrelated uh, the day after the incident. Uh, I'm Charles Melton's Oscar. Uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm Santa Claus. <laughs> Santa Claus. Uh, you know, in, in, in my uh, old age, I old actually age. enjoy playing uh, Santa like on, on the phone and stuff, like for my nephew. Uh, Every uh, year, uh, my, my uh, sister-in-law calls me and she puts me on the phone with him. And I'm like, ho, 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 Grayson, hey! And then, you know, he'll be like telling me what he wants and stuff, but then his mom will be tattling on him. Grayson's uh, been acting up in school, Santa. <laughs> what? <laughs> Grayson, right makes Santa very pissed off. And then he holds the phone, he looks at the call ID, and it's you. Dude, one, one Uncle year Danny. he's going to find out that it's me. He's going to be like, oh, Uncle Danny, is that you? No, Grayson, it's Santa. I'm like, yeah. shit face. You're wearing a very uh, Christmassy shirt. Yeah, 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 I do have to yeah. say. Yeah. Um, well, this is our last episode of the year, folks. Uh, we've made it through 2023. Clap it up. Clap it hey. up. You need more came back and, and made it through um, uh, the year. Third and, full year. And Yes. And um, today we're going to be discussing May, December, directed by Todd Haynes, uh, along uh, with Sex, Lies, and Videotape, the first, the debut feature by Steven Soderbergh. The Goat. The Goat. The Goat. Um, and I selected these two films. And I believe, actually, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the first time that one of our personal selections has been a first viewing for all of us. Because mm-hmm. none of us had seen, seen it. Sex Lies. Mm-hmm. No, but like so many yes. professors love this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, acting so professors, yeah, yeah, yeah. film professors good. love Sex yes. Lies. I, and I, yep. I feel like I watched so many Soderbergh movies, I've just avoided this one. I, you know, the thing is, like, I've seen his movies that he shot on his phone, and, I, and I'm not crazy <laughs> You haven't seen about Ocean's this. Eleven? No, I have, yeah, no. But I the, <laughs> <laughs> like, Unsane, and like, he did another one where he like shot oh, yeah. High Flying Bird, though, was fun. I like High Flying Bird. Have okay. you seen The Nick? I'm rewatching that right now. I have not. The Nick That's is with, good. Uh, with Clive Owen. Clive Owen, where Clive Owen just plays a, a cocaine addicted doctor. Yeah. It's just yeah. jittery you know, hands. Uh, yeah. Film Twitter often laments the death of the erotic thriller as a mainstream uh, film genre. But what about uh, the erotic drama? Right. Mm, Hi. Yes. Welcome to a really weird TED talk. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, that's kind of what both of these movies are, right? They yeah. deal heavily with sex. They're both like yeah. kitchen sink dramas, if you will. And uh, they're they're erotic. Do you dramas. think Do you think May December could have been aided by James Spader being in it? Do you think he could have played a role in it? There's a Probably. lot of movies that are about James Spader having sex. By yeah, the way. Ultron, he Crash, Age of Ultron, Age yeah. of Ultron. Yeah. 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 He loses sex appeal on that. People are in love with. There's, there's like fan cams for Ultron on on TikTok. Yeah, there is. Mm. It disturbs. I am not Ultron. I always thought <laughs> that it was weird the way his the way his mouth. His mouth he has metal lips. lips. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, strange. he does some teeth. But um, I just wish they lit up. You know. Yeah. Anyway, before the reviews, we have the news. Speaking of robots, so much news. Oh yeah, Wes, what's what's on your mind? Speaking of robots is the wrong uh, segue. Uh, segue. Uh, Jonathan Majors <laughs> is not a robot. He's uh, been packed up. Uh, but he has been packed up. Uh, Jonathan Majors has had a, 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 a interesting few months. Um, you know what's interesting about Jonathan Majors? Top of the year, he was on top of the world, right? So we have like, mm. I've never seen a fall so sharp. I was yeah. championing no, and, like, him. Very quickly, he kind of like, we all were. So he, we're, on rec- we're all on record I, being like amazing I was actor. like, he's going to be the next fucking biggest <laughs> thing there is. <laughs> were people saying, uh, there, were, there were like, uh, you know, buzzes of uh, best supporting actor noms for Creed 3. Well, mm. well, here's the thing. It's a, he's so, very, very so He does young. Creed 3. He's the best part of that movie. He he's does uh, Ant-Man, Quantumania, and he's a part of that he, movie. He is a part of that movie. <laughs> He's a part of the movie. He's the best he's part of that movie, too. He's in, he's in Loki season two. Yes, uh, and then he was supposed to have magazine dreams, which would have been kind of the cherry on top, uh, where he plays apparently himself. He's really uh, good. And uh, uh, we haven't really talked about it, but there was uh, in March, I remember exactly where it was because we have a group chat, and I was watching John Wick 4, mm-hmm. uh, and I walked out to get popcorn for my uh, girlfriend. And as I walked out, I got an alert that said... 
Jonathan Majors has been arrested, and they went, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? The first thing uh, Twitter did was say, what does this mean for the MCU? Yeah, classic. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> Denzel Washington can finally <laughs> play Kang. <laughs> but uh, no, he, 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 uh, he was charged with four very serious um, charges that include, uh, you know, domestic abuse mm-hmm. and and stalking, harassment, harassment. Mm-hmm. Um, and what we understand about the situation legally uh, is that Jonathan Majors uh, was on the phone with another woman, texting another woman. His girlfriend found out. She gra- go- went for his phone. He grabbed her hand uh, and hit her. Uh, and then something else happened in the car. We're not quite sure. Yeah, he might have like twisted her finger or something like that. He, yeah, and then he definitely hit her in the face because she had oh. uh, things on her face. And then he gets out of the car and starts running, running down the street. <laughs> like, okay. Um, and didn't know that part. and yeah. this is part of what we have later found out is a um, a relationship of abuse that he had yeah. with this this young woman um, that he met on the set, I believe, of Ant Man: Quantumania. Hmm. Dated for about a year or two years. Uh, and we have, uh, you know, audio of him telling her he's a great man. That's why she shouldn't go out and drink. Uh, and it's just... A, Do we know what she was on that? Was she like a PA? Uh, I, that's a good question. I don't think she was a PA. I don't think she was... We do. That. Nothing like that. But no, I don't think she was a PA. What's but her? she did work on it. Um, and, in any case, he's been, on, he's been in court for a few months now. And, um, you know, I think it's easy to get wrapped up in... Oh, uh, what's this going to do for his career? What's mm-hmm. it going to do for the MCU? I think at the end of the day, it's like... We give these guys a lot of power, uh, and they show you who they really are, and they hurt people, and that's not great. I um, swear to God, though, so. within the first few hours of that news breaking, people on Twitter were saying we should recast Kang with yeah. Timothy Chalamet. No, so. they did not. Yes, no, they did. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> they were like photoshopping in blue and stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a bad situation. I mean, there's really no, there's no like kitschy jokes. It's just kind of a sad. Bad situation. Um, I, yeah, yeah. I, and and I don't not to like drag the the the, te- the tone down too much, um, but it, it it's hurtful because when you are you know uh, uh, especially like a young black actor and you're growing up and you're and you're looking and hoping for um, not necessarily heroes but people who people to admire people Mm. whose work to aspire towards Mm. all that um and you know the the death of andre brower recently made me reflect a lot on how many great um working black actors we've lost in the past few years um reg e kathy michael k williams um, that one was Chad Chadwick Boseman. You know, was Lance tough. Reddick, Chadwick Boseman, yeah. obviously. Lance Reddick, Percy Jackson. We got to do a Percy Jackson Lance episode. Reddick oh my god, man. have you watched it? No, she, yeah, yeah, she yeah. said it was great. Really? Yeah. And and all, uh, John Singleton, a director. Oh my god, yeah. Um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And uh, um, uh, Ron Cephas Jones. Yeah. Like all of these. Oh my god, I forgot he died. Yeah, I think yeah, that was yeah. this year too. So it's just like when uh, there's that sort of like mortality already that seems to be in the air and then the people who are here yeah. who do seem vibrant who seem young also mm-hmm. are, are internally broken um and I mean, so vin diesel vin diesel just oh had my a, god uh bat- i think it was like sexual battery of an ex-assistant on fast five yes, yes. i know we yes. uh, vin diesel is only black on thursdays but <laughs> <laughs> you know punches in for one day <laughs> it has this effect sometimes where like work feels haunted like i, yeah. I remember when john wick 4 came out and even when that hellboy game came out yeah. and, like seeing oh, like yeah. lance's you know legible artistic fingerprints all over both of those it just kind of the work mm-hmm. feels like Haunted, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It feels like there's a ghost in the machine. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a very tragic. Especially thing. Lance Lance Reddick playing Zeus, you know, and yeah, and, which is yeah. uh, his final performance. His I think, final right? performance, which is you know fitting, a uh, very important character to that series. I hope they recast it with an actor of that magnitude. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it 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 is true what you said, Justin. It's like black people don't have that many celebrities to look up to uh, considering the amount of celebrities that exist we have a small amount and then the amount that we have are internally try uh not even trying but are like re reinscribing the pain that they have experienced themselves you know vin diesel jonathan majors i'm sure there's many many others are do- are doing awful things mm. um because they now have power and they've never had power before or something happened to them or whatever and it's and it's unfortunate to see and you know, um, anyway, 
Let's move on to something more fun, like the nigga who leaked uh, <laughs> the rocks, six. GTA Six, oh, and then well, Rocksteady. Well, I mean, yeah, there were a lot of uh, leaking. Tons Wes, of was it you? You are the known leak lord. Hey, 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 hey! hey, hey. <laughs> it's just me on my laptop <laughs> leaking Wolverine. I was saying this a few days ago, but it's it's funny that like these massive like billion dollar game companies are like so susceptible to like <laughs> someone just left the flash drive. Yeah, on the hundreds table. of million dollars <laughs> worth of leaks. Rockstar, like uh, almost two years ago there was a huge gta 6 leak yes there was a lot you of talked the, about it on the podcast one of the first yeah, news a, items a lot of the source code like all the character models the location that's how we found out we were going back to vice city i mean imagine like being a dev who's working on something for 10 years and then like in, over the course of one day like everything is out uh. there the same exact thing has happened now with insomniac mm-hmm. but with insomniac you know it's even bigger though the difference them. with like them and rockstar yeah. is rockstar will spend 10 years to work on one game insomniac was working i think on like, like four, three games concurrently four, i think because yeah. they were doing a Ratchet and Clank, they were doing Wolverine, yeah. they were doing Spider Man Three, and Most then their yeah. whole slate and Venom, of releases, the Venom DLC. Yeah, they're doing. Well, it's going to be like it's. Oh, it's it's going to be like Miles game. Morales. Yeah, it's gonna be like yeah. Miles game. Yeah. And you didn't I, hear about this? It all leaked, man. I what? guess Harry. I guess Harry Osborn. Someone and wants to play as that version of Venom. I guess? A, a game that they're targeting for twenty thirty five, an X Men game yeah. where you're supposed to be able to play as like the core X Men, mm, including Jean I think Grey. Cyclops, Jean Grey, Jean, Storm. Well, Jean is in Wolverine. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. and so are um, the bad guys from the Insomniac Spider-Man, the, the first Insomniac Spider-Man. Oh, so it's Spider-Man. all one universe? Yeah. So it's all one universe, yeah. and it's going to be PS5 exclusive, so I mean, I think that's how they're able to yeah. kind of put all that together. But I mean, this is very sad, isn't it? Because yeah. leaks like this affect everybody. Their personal information was leaked of like employees and stuff, so now they're susceptible to identity theft yeah. which is kind of tragic mm. it pushes things back I mean not that that's you know the most important thing but I would like to play and there's a spider yeah, sometime and soon there's, and there's you know? a spider verse game coming I, th- I think so oh, okay. it's, they, they think leaked so. not only the Wolverine because uh, there was a side mission in Spider-Man 2 that, that takes yes, us to that the ties into Spider-Verse Spider- and it has like that mm. style and everything. Be- because I think what happened was they leaked they also they leaked a, a generous portion of Wolverine which you can find mm-hmm. online uh, they leaked character models of Wolverine that's how we know Jean Grey is in it and then they leaked the entire release schedule. So yes. it's like, we know it's going to be... Yeah, it's going to be Wolverine, you, Venom, Spider-Verse, Spider-Man 3, X-Men. Um, and that's like five major projects that I guess they were working on concurrently that are all... And, and with Spider-Verse, I mean, this isn't the most important thing to talk about right now. But like the fact that you can play as every single Spider-Man already, it's like, what is the Spider-Verse game even going to look like? You're going to probably play as different... Like Spider Gwen and Spider Woman. Sure. I guess that's the appeal. You can already play as like uh, Spider Man 2099 and uh, who else? Like Spider Man Noir and stuff mm, is already yeah, in the game. Yeah. How long? Costume wise, yeah. yeah. How long until we, we get burned out of the Spider Verse shit? I'm already. Like, like, yeah. I'm already. I like, when I saw that side quest in Spider Man 2 where you have to collect the, the spider bots that are uh, for like oh, 2099 yeah. and like 60s Spider Man and stuff, I was like, okay, guys, like, yeah. like, enough of this. I, I, of and I love Across the Spider Verse. It's like yeah. one of my favorite the movies last of the year. two Spider Man movies were both Spider multiverse yeah, movies. Hey, how, how fast have people turned on. Uh, no, no way, way home. home. Like, mm-hmm. like immediately. But people are like, <laughs> people are like that fucking ugly movie. <laughs> it's like, it's like the, right, the, yeah. the only sure. thing I can I can like say, you know, against uh, you know, across the Spider Verse that I wasn't into is is that whole like segment where they're in the like so- Spider Society. Oh, I love that. And we you know, like we that? see, we see like the video game Spider Man and like sixty Spider Man. Ju- they just seem to be cramming in as many references as they could. And like I was really loving the plot up to that. And then it kind of became like mm. the twenty minute cameo That's section. I feel like if there's any movie and that can do that though, it is that one. Sure, you know what I mean. Yeah. Sure, but but I just I don't know. I I, I love Into the Spider Verse yeah, yeah. because all of the Spider Man in that movie are integral to the plot. Right. Yeah. It, we, it's not until the second movie that 20 minute like sequence where we're yeah. seeing. Toby, Andrew, hey guys, Donald Glover. Yeah. I know he was never actually the Prowler, but you know that's no, the one yeah, that yeah. I don't love. It's, I, uh, it, it, I, th- I was kind of like, guys, please, can we just can we just get through this? I part? think like, I think the one thing about that though is that in that movie, it doesn't ever feel like it loses miles. Like that was my concern going in. I think it's always about the fact that I think there's yeah. the reason why there's so many Spider Men there is to sell toys, but it's also because it's yeah. like all these Spider Men believe that there is a thing they must follow when Miles is mm. the outlier. Yeah. So like seeing the massive amounts of yes. them, I think it helps tighten his plot. But yeah. I, I would agree. I mean, Into the Spider-Verse is like, 
if not number one, number two best superhero yeah. movie ever. Into the Spider Verse is, is I think incredible. a masterpiece. I yeah, think it's incredible. Is I, I was yeah. not nearly as hot yeah. on Across the Spider Verse, but maybe the oh, third, man, maybe the third one can retroactively make Across the Spider Verse better. It in seems my like eyes. they're, they're going to pair back down for three. Can Check I, back in for best of the year pod we're going to do next year. With, uh, yeah, in January. Banfitch with Robbie. Those animators a little bit more leeway next time because those motherfuckers were overworked. I know they saw the, the new ones coming out twenty twenty five. I know those animators saw that shit and they started crying. <laughs> <laughs> like, I fucking can't believe this dude. Is that picture of Robert Downey? Where's it? Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, what else do we have? Um, uh, GTA yeah, guy got GTA guy got uh, sentenced prison. to wait, well, well, to so life. The, <laughs> the the GTA leaker turns out was uh, I think the son of Strauss Zelnick or like a, another one of the heads of uh, the art department mm-hmm. of the developers, and like he found all of that shit on his dad's computer, and like a few days <laughs> before the the trailer came out. <laughs> He was showing the map. He was showing like uh, he, he was showing like the NPCs walking around and stuff. And then the trailer leaked a day before, and he was trying. He leaked the trailer to like uh, draw attention to his like uh, cryptocurrency that Wait. he was trying to peddle. Wait. He was trying to pedal like Bitcoin or like a Bitcoin spinoff kind of thing. And he was like, "Look, guys, the GTA Six trailer," and then put like the Bitcoin watermark over the trailer. And Rockstar was like, "God damn, bro!" But he All was right, here's our trailer. By the way, guys, sentenced to life in a secure hospital. Yeah. They don't even give that to some murderers. No. I, Zach, what does secure Zach, hospital mean? This shit cost like, two <laughs> billion, dude. That that's they they their case was probably that he. Because, I mean, at that point, that's like being like a, a Benedict Arnold or something. I was going to say. That's like, it's like, it's that's like this guy and then economy. Bernie Which Madoff, is, like, in terms of white-collar crimes. It's like a $2 billion dollar project. Yeah. That's no, an entire country. They're going to kill him in jail like Jeffrey Epstein. But sentence his life in hospital like, prison until he's no longer a danger it makes it sound like <laughs> until he's no longer he's a danger. Like until he forgets how to street. use computers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> until he forgets language. When yeah. Exactly. Yeah. When they do like Alex from A Clockwork Orange, they're going to keep his eyes open. Oh, that's, that's well, crazy. that sucks for that guy, but uh, we got to see some GTA 6 shit a day early, so you know, <laughs> good for us, right? I God remember damn, I, I was at dude. work, and Justin, or I think I think someone else told me that this trailer has leaked, so I'm like texting uh, Justin, and then you watch the trailer, you're like, yeah, it looks okay. I'm like, all right. So it's, they probably didn't show that much. I get to my break, I, sh- I watch the trailer, I'm like, holy I'm like trying not to like be too loud to like make people think I'm having a heart attack or anything, but like that trailer is amazing. It's a good trailer. From that first shot, how dense the population is on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. All of those NPCs on the on the just like doing their own. One of them is Maddie DeFreeze. Each other. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Our friend Maddie is is a NPC and. uh, Oh, actually, she didn't tell you about this. She's in GTA 6. She told us about it. She's an NPC in GTA 6. She Mm. she she said that she's in GTA 6. I assume she's the girl on the car shaking her ass. I. We'll ask her. I'll send her this. By, by the way, this. the jiggle physics, okay? I, I mean, I said back in 1999, if they ever put ass physics in games, that's when I would stop playing. <laughs> but look, these these ass physics are, are, are pretty great. I mean, there, there was a shot of the strip club. Yeah, there, there's a shot of the strip club where you could really see the jiggle physics, like, in, in... I mean, I think the horse's balls in Red Dead Redemption 2 was, like, their first, like, step <laughs> the towards this. Foray. And yeah. now, like, the asses in the strip clubs in GTA 6 are, like, the the peak of all of those years of development. Um, the lighting engine looks amazing. <laughs> He's looking it up right now. Looking, Zach, you're not low, bro. No, 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 no. I'm still looking at the about asses? this. No, the the indefinite hospital order. I'm just yeah. like I'm reeling, like because what if Zach, I it's was the like, biggest oh, entertainment project of all time. For, forever. The, I think Didn't this cost a billion dollars. This cost two. So so this costs more than like going on ten Marvel movies. Imagine that. No, a Marvel a movie will cost budget. a billion soon. Um, a Marvel movie costs on average like two fifty to three. Secret Wars million. is going to cost a billion. No, it's not going to cost a billion. It's going to cost eight hundred million. Avatar, <laughs> two, Avatar two did not even cost four hundred. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to look up how much the most expensive. I remember when Justice League, when we found out it cost three hundred million dollars because of all the reshoots and stuff, people were like, "That's criminal. That's mm-hmm. the most expensive movie ever." So if and an then, MCU and costs then, more uh, than that, and then uh, Dial of Destiny came out, and they were like, "How much did that cost? It's like four hundred? Are you serious? Yes, because they had to they had to, they had to for, for, for a, mo- face for a movie that no one saw. Which one he looks was this? Be- he looks Destiny, not Indiana very Jones. convincing. Oh God, wait, it costs so much money, dude. So what is the most expensive? We might we might cut all of this for the sake of brevity, but what is the most expensive? Force Awakens. Marvel movie though. Oh, Marvel movie is Age of Ultron. Hello. How much did it cost? Three hundred and sixty-five, okay. followed very closely by Endgame. Well, which that's is a far cry from a billion though. 
I mean, we'll, for, we'll, for a video game to cost two billion, that's like insane. We'll get there. That's very billion, aggressive. That'll be, be- the because costs. GTA Five and Red Dead Redemption Two are the highest selling oh, games still not, of all time. These are not adjusted for inflation because adjusted for inflation, Force Awakens cost five hundred and fifty-two million. Good God! How much has shit inflated within the past like five years? A lot. A lot. Okay. A lot. Yeah. That sucks. We know Matt. <laughs> that sucks. Twenty-one seconds. We know Matt. <laughs> um, <laughs> game Awards, some big winners. Uh, Baldur's Gate three took Game of the Year. Alan Wake two, a game that we're both enjoying a lot, took I think uh, four awards. Nice. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom wins Best Action Adventure. Uh, yeah, pr- pretty pretty cool. Although they were playing off a lot of the developers um, to instead have like a list celebrities like Tim Chalamet and Simu Liu come yeah. on stage and talk. Simu and Liu, stuff. our favorite. Oh, yeah, yeah Wes's our favorite, favorite guy, actor. Our favorite guy. Yeah. Uh, Wes is a big with gamers. Why is it big Wes? With he, he also hates I think he, I've yeah. heard more about your hatred for him. I, 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 I my girlfriend is irritating. close personal yeah. friends with him. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> I find I find <laughs> it very to get irritating. A, yeah. But uh, you, w- weird that, that like to legitimize the Game Awards is like a real mainstream award show. They have yeah, to bring in all these like a list celebrity. Like they had um, who's the all right, all right, all right guy? Matthew McConaughey. They have him come up there and like present. All right, all right, all right guy. That's what he says. He they they have him come up there and present something. Jordan Peele was there, which was cool. Because but Jordan Peele was actually involved in he the project. He looks like he was yeah, going to get in though. When he walked in, he was no, like, no, no. That, that was very cool. That was cool. How like the needle dropped and then he like came through. Because um, yeah. he's working on a project with the Hideo Kojima. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Did you guys cool. see that trailer? No. Yes. It's uh, they're, you sent they're it to using me uh, nice. that tech that used to be kind of underpowered back when L.A. Noir came out, but is now like you can really capture everything an actor is doing with their face. Oh, that's so. Sick. So the whole trailer is just their faces and then like black surrounding and them like saying things out of context and emoting and stuff. And I think it's just really showing off the technology, but it's kind of abstract that's pretty sick. That's pretty and sick. surreal and weird. It's a cool trailer. Uh, he's writing that game with Jordan Peele. I thought maybe this would lead to Jordan Peele kind of like starting his own video game mm-hmm. enterprise mm-hmm. slash adventure. What's that the, would be cool oh if God, Monkey Paw had a games division. It's going to be an Xbox exclusive, uh, which also the Blade game. Hey, I'm so sorry. Rehearsal, I'm so sorry, oh, Doug. Yeah. But that's going to be fun, right? I mean, uh, you know, I think, could they at least have let Mahershala voice the character? Do we know that he's not? I guess well, it doesn't. The guy who voiced Colin in a death loop is voicing Blade. That's probably what Damn. it is because it's the same studio. Hey, can we figure out Blade? <laughs> well, the, the concept art is sick. It takes place in like a cyberpunk future. It's there's, Paris. Like, cars ah. it's, it's Paris. Yeah, but there's like, flying cool. cars in Paris and stuff. I know. I know. Sick. Marvel's watching it. Like, how did they do it? <laughs> how did they figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> and, a, and a game is like. 20 times the amount of writing you would have to do for a movie. So. Wait, is the game the cyberpunk Paris or is that the movie you're talking about? The, the game. The, game. We, we the movie hasn't been written yet. Okay, I thought we were the movie about hasn't been written. Well, it has been written. Yeah. It just yeah. keeps, the script just keeps Classic. getting thrown out. Classic. Yeah. But concept art, that's all we got. That's game. Cool. Oh, him, but there was a, a cinematic trailer. Yeah, him getting out of the barber that? seat that and being cool. like, I gotta go kill some big bugs. Cool. It looks cool. Yeah, I mean, visually it looks like it could be really fun. It's just, um, it's weird that like, I imagine that, you know, the big Marvel wheel, the big wheel behind all of this would have wanted that game and the movie to be co like. Maybe they will, man. Because I mean, they did it with like three years before they come out these days. So. The Spider Man movies and Spider Verse come out the same year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it feels like. You mean the Spider Man uh, games? Yeah, and Spider- yeah, yeah, both yeah. Of them. With, yeah, and you know, you know, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like Marvel needs to. I was underwhelmed by Spider Man too. Mm. People were salty that didn't win any. That game seems awards, to be the general I, consensus about yeah. Spider Man. Zelda beats it for best action adventure. Baldur's Gate beats it for game of the year. Uh, Aaron Lowe Wake beats it win. in art direction. Earned, earned. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Spider Man Two doesn't win a fucking thing. Uh, <laughs> tough. That's tough. tough. People I mean, they get Yuri to win all the money they made from yeah. from pre sales. Yeah. That's, That's true. true. Can I say one thing? People are mad that uh, GTA Six is coming to console first and PC later, which is what they always do. I'm not. A, I'm not a big PC guy, man. There's something that's mm. kind of like old school about like the yeah, home console people, experience. Do people still play games on PCs? Lots of fucking people. Yeah, huge community. But but the way I see it, like I like sitting down on the couch, having like a home console, the yeah. TV in the living room. You know what I mean? Yeah. PC people like to do their specs and their mods and stuff, and like uh, textures on high and, yeah. and draw <laughs> distance on high. That's great, but like that's for nerds, bro. Yeah, I like loading true. up that's the true. fucking PlayStation. It's some of my best memories of gaming are like. Sitting in the basement, like, uh, you know, like crisscross applesauce with the GameCube, playing fucking yeah. whatever it was, you know, Resident Evil. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I don't really care that, that GTA 6 isn't coming to PC. 
you know yeah. i'm fine with it i think i'm the only person in the world but yeah. cool by so, me yeah. certain actors are getting um are getting dropped wow. for 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 uh voicing uh, yeah. their their support for palestine and they're being dropped by their uh their their agencies their uh, susan sarandon yeah. who's like you know a Who, pretty legendary working actress. Didn't Tom Cruise have to go in and enforce them yes. to hire his agent back? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He like yeah. held he like took him skydiving and held them over the drop <laughs> point, like a mission impossible three. And then Tom Cruise does some cool shit. And yeah. like I guess Tom Cruise is kind of a badass. Yeah. I think it's it, I think he, Tom Cruise above all else um respects the cinematic film, art. Yeah, yeah. respects yes, cinema. And respect like cinema. um I mean you can imagine had he been <laughs> Had he been unleashed during the golden age, right? Like in the 50s and 60s, he what a menace. So badly he, he yeah, Fatty Arbuckle yeah. would still be alive. He would, he would have killed. <laughs> I, um, think, I think Tom Cruise would have killed people if he was around in an earlier He would have gotten yeah. fucking dirt on like uh, yeah, Jimmy Stewart and like all those people. He, he, he would have had dirt Him on and Buster Keaton like, just hanging yeah. out, you know? <laughs> hanging off clock oh, towers man, together, dude. you know? Oh, man. Oh, man. He should have been around at that time. He would have been a silent movie star. He definitely would oh, have been like, and he wouldn't have died. He would have just disappeared. They were like, we have no record. <laughs> Tom Cruise. <laughs> but yes, uh, Melissa Barrera was dropped from uh, Scream 7, and then Jenna Ortega quickly left after because of scheduling conflicts, wink, wink, but I'm sure. Also because she's making this movie with Martin Freeman where she's like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, Jeez. hey. Hey, no. A, what do we say about it? Hello? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Coming up from the... <laughs> This. There was a very funny uh, little news story where, where someone fabricated like Grace Randolph saying that she overheard Jenna Ortega being like, "Oh, sorry, like I like I can't make those dates." And they're like, "Well, we didn't even tell you the dates." And she's like, "Oh, so no, I can't even hear you." And like was in like a restaurant or Classic. something. Uh, Grace Randolph confirmed that that was not true, but I believed it because she said crazier things. Yeah, she uh, has like she has that Pedro Pascal and uh, uh -huh. Huerta looks the same. <laughs> yeah, you, you uh, don't remember when we talked uh, about this? She said that she was like. He can't get cast as Reed. He looks oh, just yeah. like Namor. And it's like, they look different. <laughs> they look very but different. It, Jenna Ortega's cool for that. Like, she, we know that she supports Palestine. There's, like, old yeah. tweets of hers that she's, like, since taken down. But, like, they, they wouldn't fire her because they know that she's, like, she's an A-lister now. She's, right. like, she's a money. big deal. But also, um, apparently, she was going to leave anyway. And, and I'm sure this didn't help. And yeah. I don't even know what Scream 7's going to be. It's going to be another reboot. They're probably going to yeah. try and get Nev Campbell to come back, yeah, who is back also, too. I'm sure, burned by them yeah, and isn't sure interested. Somewhere uh, in the great beyond, Wes Craven is laughing. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. like, you guys tried to do it without me. Tried yeah. to do it without Wes. <sighs> anyway. Anyway, sc Scream ends at a six, I guess. Yeah. I, uh, um, we talked about the, the Game Awards, and as part of, I guess, a segue into our first film, the Golden Globe uh, Award nominations were released and it launched a big conversation about uh, genre and how films are categorized because May, December uh, was in the um, Outstanding Musical or Comedy it's section. So, it's not. so we will Hello? take our break and we'll come back to talk about tone and everything else uh, in May, December. Yeah. Why can't we talk about it? If we're in love, as we say we are... Listen, I'm going to read what Wikipedia calls this. An American dark comedy film yes. nice. from a screenplay by Sammy Birch based on a story by first Birch screenplay. and Alex Menkenick. Hmm? From Sammy Birch, first screenplay. Oh, amazing, amazing work. Loosely inspired by the story of Mary Kay Letourneau, who, if you don't know... Is in hell. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> This is so funny. I, I'm showing this to uh, my mom, who knew about the Larry, Mary Kay Letourneau stuff, but didn't know that the rest of the movie is like made up. So she was like, "An actress was really like studying her, and like the actress like really slept with the, the, the younger man and stuff." And I was like, "Yeah, mom, like all of this happened. Like, all, all of this stuff happened too." Um, and but, it looked like Charles Melton. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, this is uh, it, it. Is it takes a very serious situation that occurred um, when a, when a teacher. Uh, Molested. Sex, molested, molested, yeah, she, yeah. She was, uh, began. She was his boss at a pet shop. Right? She well, got yes, in the real, in the real, in the real world. I mean, yes, she, she. Uh, in the movie too. Yeah. yeah. Point is, this old woman, this adult woman, uh, <laughs> molested like a boy movie. and then had his children and then they got married and it was weird. Um, um, he and, had his kid in jail. Yes. Yeah. And then had the second kid in jail yeah. too. How long because she. In jail for? 
for the first time, okay, seven you, months, yeah. I think, and the first second time. time. She went, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, so she went to, I think they, they do this exactly in the movie. The first time she goes to jail, the they catch first. them. <laughs> they catch them, and they're just like, okay, you go to jail for a finite amount of time, but like, you can't be around this kid anymore. Yeah. yeah. She gets out of jail, immediately, immediately goes, goes to his house, yes. and they're like, Mary Kate, what the fuck? <laughs> and they send her to jail for like a long, a long time. Yeah. yeah. But then when she so got she out, they were, like they were married until 2019. And and then they were divorced, and then when she got cancer, he went back and lived with her until she died. Oh my god! Yikes! Yeah. This movie takes that situation and adds a meta layer yeah. of satire on top of it by having Natalie Portman starring as an actress seeking to recreate the life story of Gracie, uh, whatever Julianne Moore's character is. Um, we're gonna cut this, but what actress do you think she's supposed to be? Uh, Mandy Moore, N- Natalie Portman. You think she's supposed to be Mandy Moore? <laughs> I, th- I thought she. Like I thought the whole thing was, and it kind of does this, but I thought it was going to lead into her like making a porno or something. You know, oh, it, God, she's just kind of making like a crazy. melodramatic like uh, soap opera kind of. Well, thing. She's making a lifetime. Like, exactly. Movie. So it's I thought it was going to end up being like that. That there was like a Hulu porn parody, movie. and she was the porn actress yeah. who was like going yeah. above and beyond to like mimic the. Uh, it almost is that like yeah. by Pretty by the is. by the end. Yeah. It's um, like everything but that. Yeah. She's still doing like a TV soap opera. <laughs> so you know, this season so far, we'd been doing um, sort of. Uh, director focused episodes we you know uh we started with um Freakin. we started with William Friedkin and then we went to Scorsese, Scorsese and then Del we did Toro. Del Toro I broke the mold sorry um uh, and I but I was I was fascinated by this movie I knew I wanted to see it because I really liked the two lead actresses in it but uh, and I'd never seen a Todd Haynes film anyway um but I I was drawn in by this immediately I think it's um uh the screenplay is magnificently like dark and satirical and the way that it captures basically like the the sensationalism of scandal in america particularly and then you know i think it's it's a it's a film that ultimately is about uh boundaries the boundaries obviously between people and relationships and then the boundaries uh that we have you know i even thought like as actors right and as creatives like the boundaries that we set for ourselves when it comes to whether or not we choose to engage with certain subject matter. Um, so anyway, I thought it was, it, it, it really affected me and I, I wanted to talk about it with y'all. Um, so yeah, uh, first impressions. Um, I, I, you know, it's captivating. I mean, I think uh, everyone's doing a really good job. Julianne Moore, just really scary. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I mean? But it's like a very believable, fucked up relationship mm-hmm. that she has with this guy. Um, Charles Melton, I've never seen him before and he's really, really Not a Riverdale good. fan, huh? I didn't watch Riverdale, huh? Hmm. You Not watch a, Riverdale? I did. Okay. Not a fan of that movie she did you with Yara. You a bold face liar. I'm so serious. You watched Riverdale? I'm dead ass. All four? How much? Not all four. No. no. <laughs> I finished Twin Peaks, but you watched Riverdale. Hey, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey. For your and sake. I've also, the son is also a star of the movie he did with Yara Shahidi. Oh, I've also seen That it. was him. Yeah, where she she's... plays a Jamaican. Is she doing like a, vo- like a no. voice? No. Oh, okay. She's just a Jamaican immigrant with no accent. But isn't the whole thing that she's like in a bubble? She can't leave the room? No, is no. That that's point? another movie, Yara Shahidi. This is the one where she's going to be, uh, she's a Jamaican immigrant that's going to be deported in 24 hours. So she, he's like, violently on he's like, he's like, he's like, <laughs> Char- it tra- it good. Charles Melton is like, I'm going to make you fall in love with me in one day. Got it. And they do. And then she gets deported. Oh, wow. <laughs> anyway, Julianne Moore. Yes. <laughs> she's, really, uh, she's doing a really good job. Natalie Portman, uh, who I, I, I think has always been really good, but I have a newfound respect for her after just watching, what was it, 2006's Black Swan for the first time, like two weeks ago? 2012, but yeah, okay. or 11. Zach, she's a report with this director, Todd Haynes. They did this extremely creepy movie from the 90s together called Safe. Uh, Todd okay. Haynes directing Julianne Moore. She's this woman who can't come in contact with germs. So at first, uh, in the final act of this movie, she's in this community of people who like live in basically like their bubbles. Yeah. And like if they have to go out into the outside world, they have to like wrap themselves and shit. And like basically, she gets severed completely from all other human connection, and she like is just talking to herself in the mirror at the end of the movie, oh, saying "I love you, I love you" over and over. It's that's like, pretty cool. It's it's a really cool companion piece actually to this movie because same director yeah. Julianne Moore, and it's so creepy. That's cool. It, it's like like. The the yeah. you know fingerprints are all over yeah. May December. Yeah, May just it's a very it's a disturbing it's a creepy movie. Everyone is just I don't know it's just uh, I don't know it's I mean it's a very fucked up story and of course it mm-hmm. comes from something real. So any elements of satire are yeah. kind of jarring. Um, well, I think, the but it tone, makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I think the tone is kind of sophisticated. Yeah, you know you you can't if you were to play this like. 
straight, I think that would be the wrong way to go about it. Yeah, I think right. some elements of like tongue and cheek and like yeah. camp and stuff are utilized pretty yes. well. It helps the audience have like a degree of separation yeah. where we can kind of look at this and just kind of chuckle about how it is kind of right. a fucked up thing. And like the storytellers are having yeah. a good time telling the story. Yeah, I don't think it's in poor taste. I like, you know what I mean? Like, I, th- I do think it is handled yeah. pretty appropriately. You know what I mean? Like, even those elements, I'm like, okay, I'm not like, you know. But yeah, so that's uh, that's that's Zach's rating. What? What was your rating? Oh shit! Not rating. I, I thought you said okay. <laughs> this is uh, that was Zach's rating. Immortal. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought this is. A, I think this is a great movie. Uh, I went to go see it uh, at Lincoln Center and in, in uh, when they were playing it, um, because uh, I I heard it was a bit of a not a slower paced movie, but like with dramas, you kind of want to see them in theaters because it's very easy to get distracted when you're home um, mm-hmm. and you're watching it on TV. And I really loved it. I mean, I, I was, I think Mel- Melton is my favorite performance of the year. I talked to everybody I know about it. I think a, it's like one of, I think people are forgetting that teen star to series actor pipeline is a well-trodden territory. So every time it happens, someone's like, Whoa, yeah. that guy was in Riverdale. It's yeah. like, all right. But like, you I don't do know. your pretty boys. Yeah, shit ninety percent of our yeah. actors are like that. Yeah, you know, so I mean, it's kind of Robert Pattinson's yeah, trajectory. Zac Efron. Is, Zac Efron's trying. Is an is an Iron Claw apparently good great. movie. Um, Zac Efron is a is a case I want to study. Yeah, not today, but wow. Like, hey, we I, could I, do Iron Claw. Yeah, I feel like Iron Claw Pattinson is the example. <laughs> Pattinson is is the example of that. That's a success story, yeah. and Zac Efron yeah. is the example of that. That's. Like uh, it, it, it's not like, so much. But there's also, yeah, but there's, also right? there's yeah. also Shia LaBeouf who did it for a while. Well, was was Shia LaBeouf doing like pretty boy shit? No, but he was he wasn't a teen teen sure, exactly. show. But and, all this to say, Melton is uh, Jacob Blurry is also one. Right, uh, right. But but Melton I think gives a really spectacular performance and one that feels different from even those examples because it feels like an extremely mature performance from a guy that's like maybe 30 years old mm-hmm. and was on Riverdale for six years, mm-hmm. which is, listen, Riverdale is is wonderful oh. in its own way, uh, but you just don't expect someone who was on a CW show for so long to be able to have a performance that feels like right. it was uh, made by like a guy who's been acting for 40 years, mm-hmm. which is what this feels like. There, there, there's no flash. He has like one crying scene. He doesn't yell. Mm-hmm. But he's just like slowly falling apart the whole movie, yeah. and it's and he's clearly like a twelve year old boy inside mm. of this like giant man's yeah. body, yes, yes. which is a really hard performance to kind of it's, swing, especially really in that good. moment where he gets high for the first. Time. Yes, what, and really, it's like his son in that moment it, is it's that that moment yeah. for everybody is supposed to be like an older brother moment, yeah. where his son is like you you've never like smoked weed yeah. before. That's supposed to be like an older brother thing. Like here, let's like yeah. get high, but like he's doing it with his son and like doesn't know how to handle it, and his son is kind of has to act like the older brother and he's to like calm him down and stuff. You're okay. You're okay, you know. Oh, almost oh. falls off the roof. That's also, I think my favorite moment. Of performance. Well, I was about to say. I was about to say. Like that scene is so great because and it, it's indicative of what he, Haynes does with the rest of the movie. Is like there's so much danger in the movie, yeah. but no one dies. Nothing right. like serious on screen happens. But the whole movie you're watching, you're like, man, something. The other yeah. shoe's gonna there, drop. There's here. facades. There's yeah. like a veneer to it, and, and like scene, you're seeing it untangle and unspool. And when he starts coughing in that scene, I'm like, oh god, he's gonna he's gonna choke to death. Like he's gonna right. have asthma. Like you think something's gonna happen, but what's really happening is like he's just having a panic attack because he's having the slow realization that he's trapped. He's mm-hmm. like a trapped animal who's been trapped for 20 years and is now realizing, oh, I'm never leaving. Like I'm stuck with this woman forever. Um, so I think he's great. I think obviously Natalie Portman's incredible. She's never been bad, uh, except well, maybe well, except for maybe on. ten minutes in Attack of the Clones. You know, <laughs> no, it didn't um, even, oh right, Natalie. Um, uh, Julianne Moore is playing the scariest white woman maybe since Rose from Get Out. Like just yeah. a terrifying performance mm, of good. someone who's like a monster, but is like always like, but it, life is bad right, for me. Right, right, like right. you know, kind of assimilated like into. The, the machine and like has a job and stuff and yeah. like in the community he still makes appearances and does mm-hmm. does her little shop class making cake make would you or would you buy cakes from a woman that you from knew was to be a pedophile no, sure. sir. no you can't well, right? it's, no. we <laughs> <laughs> inflation if it's crazy. like two cakes for one then I'm like, oh, okay pedophile like, yeah okay <laughs> but i um i it's it's so interesting just before we hit record you know um uh so now we can you know start to talk about the performances themselves um Wes was mentioning how Charles Melton gained some weight 
um, uh, or maybe lost some muscle for the role to look a bit more doughy, a bit more. It's so hard for him to be so ugly, now, uh, right? Uh, yeah. You know, um, but uh, it's very difficult for him. I'm but sure. that it comes from this idea that his that his wife uh, Gracie Atherton, um, played by Julianne Moore, has been like has you, been feeding him. I think that's the feeding what we're him supposed the, to these cakes right? and these yeah. desserts that she makes, and it and it, it harkens into these sort of like Grimm's Tale, like you know Hansel and Gretel sort of thing, where the the child wanders into the forest and yeah. the witch fattens them up for the kill. Um, it it adds such a dimension Yikes. to her performance, which and I was just talking to Zach um, also because. He mentioned that he thinks Julia Moore just does have a lisp in in real life. Does she not? No, I don't That's think so. Not at all. No. Wow. No, it's it's a Mandela good performance. Mandela. <laughs> and she only has thirty five minutes guess. on screen. Someone did the calculations. Melton has it's, twice it's her like screen a, time. It's like how Hannibal Lecter is in Silence of the Lambs for just like That's sixteen true. minutes. You know? she, no, I was gonna say she's she's playing it like she's, Hannibal. Like yeah. it, there's a there's a, there's this carnivorous like. Predator. Well, obviously, predator. She's a predator. Someone will be playing Drake in a movie like this in a few years. Yeah, it, could, it might be you. You. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the idea that this is, you know, for the Golden Globes, it's put in the musical or comedy uh, a category. Now, of course, this isn't just like all, this isn't the Golden Globes' fault. Like, obviously, production teams and everything is their fault, though. Yes, but they they know which, which they submit their uh, their films for consideration yeah. in certain categories. So that must mean that Todd Haynes. You know what it is, I think, because this year was so stacked that like the official like dramatic yeah, categories were all full, but they still wanted to have this in there to some degree. This has through. happened in the past, though. I think it could have broke through. It could have, but but I mean, this has happened in the past where like movies that wouldn't normally be in those categories, they kind of have some leeway just because they want to nominate it for something, and so mm -hmm. that's how I this guess, happened. I guess the question is. Does it being nominated in that category diminish its no, quality? Not, not to me. I, I mean, I think, I think, I don't know. I mean, ultimately, I think in terms of the awards race, when we get to the academies, Melton runs the table on it, and I think yeah. everyone else is just going to get nominated. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I could see the screenplay getting nominated. I could see it sneaking into Best Picture. Well, I have it. Um, but I think ultimately, like, if it wins the Golden Globe, like, if Melton wins Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor, right? It doesn't really matter to me that it was put into a comedy category. They've done worse. Like, you know what I mean? They put the farewell into, like, I think a foreign language category mm. once, and it's fully an American <laughs> movie. <laughs> yeah. uh, I have this for uh, Best Actress, Best Supporting Actress, and uh, Best Original Score. Oh, mm. a score that I really love. It, it sounds like very Hitchcockian, and I, I mean, I wonder if it's eligible because it's not original. Yeah, so this is so this is a fun this is a fun little uh, behind the scenes tidbit. Todd Haynes interpolated the score of a film called The Go Between from 1972. Go see Saltburn. Uh, yeah, which alleged, yeah, apparently not allegedly, apparently is allegedly. also the basis allegedly. for Saltburn. Um, but it is ba it was written by Harold Pinter, uh, and it's about um, a young British boy who becomes like a messenger between these two uh, socialites having an affair. Um, I almost brought that movie on because I think it's very interesting how music is used in this film. Yeah, it, it feels like it's taken from like another place in time. Yeah, you know? like you, you watch like Hitchcock thrillers and and even like uh, Blue Velvet, the opening of Blue Velvet. This kind of commandeering, uh, it's this recurring musical motif. It feels very old school to me. The, the movie does feel very Lynchian. I know we've been saying that a lot. Sometimes, but there's like, but I like think Todd Haynes has his own kind of brand of surrealism. But I mean, like, know, in, not flair. even in terms of surrealism. I mean, like, there is a kind of like a, a, a surface layer of Americana, right. yeah, and veneers, underneath yeah. it is like that starts to crack through. Like yeah. when she visits the the first son, the white son, mm -hmm. and he's like playing in a fucking uh, bar yeah, band, classic. <laughs> and it's the Riddler from a uh, fucking uh, from Gotham. From Gotham, yeah, that is, is that who that is. is? That's yes. so funny. <laughs> I was trying to remember where I where a I knew that guy too. from. No, he, yeah, he, he is. Really He's good. giving a great performance, and this is a true to life thing where you know, like the family unit gets kind of like cracked, and it has that ripple effect onto well, onto the kids who never really learn. Your age. Yeah, yeah. Who, who, the kids who never really learn to uh, assimilate into like normal adult life the way they should because of something that happens early on that kind of stunts them forever. What do you think of the three kids? I know we're kind of jumping around, but I, I thought, I thought they the were one girl was hot. Performances, <laughs> guys. Performances, guys. Uh, no. I, 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 Julianne Moore kind of looks good in this too. <laughs> what? Dude, looks really good. What are we it's talking Julianne about? Moore. Well, what I will say to to help ground Dan's comment in in what? some film packaging is that, and I I mentioned this to Wes, but it's like you know obviously when you're working in Hollywood, yes. the industry does its best to 
fight your age, right? So Julianne Moore, like when you see her even on press for this, doesn't she's a sixty two year old woman. She doesn't look bad. She doesn't look bad at all. But in this movie, they like she looks even maybe older. I mean, and it's the way they dress her, and it's yeah. the like the pale to me. The that pale woman will never look bad. Look no, I'm not saying she's unattractive, but I'm saying I think part of the film is to make her look make the make her look right, like a crone. Right. Yeah. Like she's, she's wearing like these nightgowns oh, and like yeah. this loose baggy clothing. When and she's everything. crying in the bed because they canceled the thing, she's like, "I wasted time." Yeah. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yeah, she's like, like, "Yeah." I, I personally, if I was, uh, what is his name, Joe? Joe, you? I think so. If I was, which is crazy, Joe. Uh, anyway, whatever. Joe. Uh, if I was Joe, <laughs> you, uh, I'd be like, "Oh, like I gotta get." the fuck out of here. Like, like, when you're about to pull a gun out on something, I'll Joe you. (laughs) 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 I, uh, yeah, there's, there's scenes in here where she does, I think intentionally they read her older. Like, Mm -hmm. I think, I think whether it's that, I I just don't think Julianne Moore looks like that in real life, but they've certainly made her look like that strategically, especially in the scene, the, the, the Bergman scene where they're like standing in the mirror Mm -hmm. and they're going over the makeup. This movie lifts a lot from, from persona. persona. Yeah. A lot from yeah. persona. It's it's like very directly a spiritual successor to that yeah. movie. In terms of like the two women's identities beginning to blur. The kids. There's a really one of the probably the most uh the earliest examples of how like she's not only, you know, she she obviously oh, committed this crime scene. with this tough. boy. Really yeah. But she's also a bad mom. That like scene is the dress scene is she's brutal. Oh, you want just, your arms out? I'm so glad you're confident about your arms. <laughs> I, I, I at your age I couldn't do that. That's <laughs> of her youth and, and yeah. stuff and oh my god, dude, that's so real. They don't and, even and seem like her daughter, kids. The older daughter, the one that I love so much who like hates her mom is the only one of the kids who like is actively critical of her. Mm. she's a scene stealer and she only shows up in the movie like about like um, towards the end of the second yeah. act and she really only has lines for like two of those scenes no but, but she she's a big scene but, at the dinner but yeah. she is the only one who is like actively critical of her mom well, and is and is kind of like the bad bitch of the kids you well know? it's cause the, the boy has checked out like yeah. the boy's checked out like the scene where he goes <laughs> he's like can I be excused oh, and we just hear him go slam going, the door <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he goes and he slams the door and then but I, I think each of the kids it's really a generous movie in this sense where they cast three young actors who fucking look exactly like Charles Melton. They do. Especially mm. the boy. They do. Mm. Like like style yeah. him exactly the same. Like it was very yeah. it was very startling. But um when they when they they give each of these three kids one big scene, which yeah. is great. Like they give the girl the dress scene, they give the older daughter the dinner scene, they give the boy the scene on the roof of his dad, and yeah. each of them gets a chance for you to kind of be like Oh, like all these kids are like can't wait to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. Like they, they they're never coming back home. Like they're they're all leaving and they're never coming back. And then Charles Melton will be stuck alone with this woman forever. Yeah, which yeah. Is like a terrifying idea. The the middle daughter kind of has an interesting scene where they're. Uh, but by the way, the kid from Halloween twenty eighteen who like gets killed by the. Fence I know. I know. Is uh in that one scene. Can I just do this? Oh, it's gonna hit the. Video. He's, he's, he's with the do- the young daughter. Right? Yeah, he yeah. he uh, asks some. Um, so what's it like to like fuck on set? He's like the class clown, oh, you know. Yeah. And they're they're, they're like doing that thing with the students. Really honestly. So yeah, like, and, and it makes the uh, the middle daughter very it's uncomfortable. Like these kids are Eighteen, and she charged. Well, the room I th- with that. I think it was an attempt to uh, like volley back the kids' attempt to like make her uncomfortable. She's like, "Well, guess what, motherfucker? I have like some I have some real takeaways on that yeah, that you're and, not ready for." And know? then later, she like n- like drops his name. Like she's like, "Yeah, Cameron." And I'm yeah, like, I, no, oh, hey. it's a good scene. It's it's a great volley of uh, power. You know, it's interesting because a unique movie puts you in a headspace that is uncommon, right? And this movie puts you in a few different headspaces, like from the role of the artist who's adapting someone's life. It's like, how much am I exploiting that person? Are they going to be happy with the work I'm doing? You know, Um, I don't know. It it made me think about that the whole time. And then by the end, like, you know, like we were saying, this this is a movie about veneers and surfaces and they untangle and unspool. And by the end, like the guards are down and Julianne Moore is basically like, I hope he didn't believe all that shit shit that my you know son told you and, it, and it's basically a very direct like i don't like you and this was unnecessary you mm-hmm. know that kind of thing so so they they start as like uh people who are kind of associates who are trying to navigate through this thing and by the end of it it's like this was unnecessary and yeah, i don't yeah. like you you yeah. know it, it was really fascinating the um the ability the the, the uh, i guess we'll have to put a content warning on this but the the son suggests the reason why julianne moore uh is a child molester is because she was molested by her brothers yeah. as a kid. 
Um, and then Julianne Moore is like, well, that's bullshit. I talk to my son all the time. Da, 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 da. Which, of and course, is a lie. It's just a lie. But I like that the movie lives in a ambivalence towards all of this. Mm-hmm. Like, even if that was the case, does that make what she did better? Right, right. Or does understanding Julianne Moore make her less of a monster? Right, right. Like, I think that's the kind of the point of the movie is it's like, yeah, it could have happened. And that would have been awful to happen to her. But she's still a monster. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't. I think often we doesn't try matter to, what brought you. It there. doesn't matter what brought you here. There's a kid here who's 35 and is like mentally 15. Like, yeah. like that's that's the shrapnel that's in the situation. And, and it's it's like, you know, for all the all the kind of the arch melodrama in the movie, the movie really leaves you at the end with this guy watching his kids graduate and realizing I'm never leaving. Like I'm here forever. And that's like, I'm kind of hell. A, I'm, and I'm in hell yeah. and like, everyone's going to leave eventually. Yeah. And I'm going to be stuck with this fucking woman and her cakes basket, forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Her cakes, yeah. One of the, one of the, um, the saddest moments of his performance is also, uh, when he invites that girl from his Facebook group to go to the, the, the get together, she's like, aren't you married? And you just see that text. Like he knows even in, even in, again, the facade that he's putting up with, with, um, Elizabeth, Natalie Portman's character of like, well, I hope you portray the truth of how it is. Like, why would I still be here if I wasn't happy? But he knows that something's wrong. And there's, and you know, the, uh, of course then the revelation fully comes when he gives her this letter uh, when he gives Elizabeth this letter that Gracie wrote to him from prison, that's like a confession of everything they did where, you know, and then this becomes what Natalie Portman performs at the end. And like, this is what adults do is what Natalie Portman says. To him. Oh, when the, yeah, oh, yeah. When she sleeps with yeah, him she goes, for like research. Yeah. This is what, what adults a, do. bro. Uh, I oh, was, no, 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 she says, this is just what grown ups do. Yes. Mm. Even more infantilized. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, they're the same age. This yeah. Poor kid, man. That's yeah. the whole thing I was thinking the whole movie. I was like, God damn. This we see kid. him as a kid the whole movie. Yeah. You know, he's like, and and he's we as the five. audience, and we as the audience, like, probably are, are, are being, um, uh, uh, evaluated in this way because we're like oh like he is a grown man but like and he's a doctor and you're like oh he has like a real job but he's like a kid you're yeah, like it's, it's a case of arrested development. isn't it cool that this 16 year old boy got a job yeah. And yeah. as a doctor yeah. you know? <laughs> it's like Dewey uh, uh, <laughs> Do- Do- Doogie Hauser Do- Doogie Hauser Do- yeah. Do- come on come on um, I made a joke with with, <laughs> with Wes that uh, you could cast Elizabeth Olsen in this Natalie Portman role and to really make Zach stop <laughs> There's a version Combust. of this movie that gets made what 10 years I, later. What if and I Zach told is you when it. I was watching, I was like, I bet Elizabeth Olsen. Could yeah, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at her, you're like, yeah, she's hot, but like, where's Elizabeth Olsen? <laughs> There's a similar chemical compound to. Uh, uh, what? To, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting a text that he's an x ray tech and not a doctor. Oh, thank you. Thank he you. Is a, yeah, I, I was going to say. I'm wrong. There, there's a. Continue what you were saying about the chemical compound. There's a chemical compound to, to <laughs> Natalie Portman that's similar to Elizabeth Olsen. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. in terms of I actress. I thought that was going in a yeah, different yeah, direction. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they, yeah. They both have it's played similar <laughs> sorts. Like like in uh, Ingrid Goes West, she plays a very similar kind of white lady. Mm. Yeah, I, I also, um, God, to yeah. go back to that scene where uh, where Natalie Portman is, you know, visiting um, her, uh, visiting the drama class and she's asked about the sex scene and everything. Not only is that, um, in terms of the writing, uh, uh, sort of a, a lens into how she will soon begin to cross the boundaries of this yes. research that she's doing. But I also just love the way that it's shot when uh, what the, there's a young lady who asks her, how do you choose her roles? And then they go behind Natalie Portman and they're mm-hmm. shooting her from like this very unique angle. You don't see her, you see like this much of her face, like mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. this half of her eye mm-hmm. from above and behind her. So you don't actually... Almost as if to say, like, even in this moment, you can't be sure how much of the truth she's telling, mm. right? Or how much of herself she's she's uh, actually letting um, come through. Um, and and of course, this is also the point where she says, "Well, you know, the characters that I think are the most fascinating are the complicated ones, the morally gray ones." You know, and she like gestures toward uh, the daughter, the middle daughter, who's <laughs> sitting in the audience, yeah. like, yeah, like your mom, <laughs> yeah. you know. And and the daughter's like, "Why would you want to play a bad person?" And she's like, oh, which suggests that she thinks her mother's a bad person, right? And right. that she th- that she assumes, obviously, Natalie Portman knows that. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're, that kid from Halloween 2018 is also such a dumb, like, film bro kind of guy. He's like Tony Soprano, and yeah, Natalie classic. Portman agrees, which fucking likens Julianne Moore's character to Tony Soprano like, <laughs> in front of his girl in the audience. <laughs> uh, the funny, one of the funnier, like, sad bits is when they are like sending Natalie Portman like candidates to play Joe. 
and oh, they're all like God. 13, 14 yeah. year olds, and she's essentially like, he's not hot enough. Do you have yeah. Ones? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? There's all, the other young boys? there's also this thing about her having asthma, which I guess is just set up so that she can invite him into her home. Oh, to I thought fix Joe. The, I thought uh, Joe had it was gonna be revealed to have asthma, and that's what was gonna the other shoe was gonna drop on the roof. Oh, uh, and he was gonna find out and die and die. Well, I think it's also to just kind of like uh, smooth over this idea of like this actress from like a I, I guess like, who's like richer and famous famous and stuff like her life kind of has its own i mean she she has this uh you know guy back home who she seems to not like they talk over the mm-hmm. phone like right. just, and then she, she may be sleeping with her director stuff. because yeah. she's yeah. asking him yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah i think it's a kind of like phil Horan is like not like this you know perfect kind of metropolitan rich actress yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. uh and then the ending where it's like she keeps like She's like, I think I'm getting it. Like she keeps like yeah. resetting. Yeah. The so table. it has a banger of an. This reminds me of the ending to uh, Tar. Yeah, uh, Todd Field <laughs> yes. movie. Very yeah. similar. When I, the movies leading up to this like punchline yeah. of an ending, which I still have to see, by the way. Um, but when I was watching this interview between um, Todd Haynes and Jeremy O'Harris, uh, Todd talked about. Well, actually, Jeremy asked him like, you know, there's this line that Julianne says about. Um, uh, about insecurity. I forget what she says, but she's like, you know, insecure people or something like that. Yeah. Something insecure like people are the most dangerous yeah. or something like that. And I, I'm not insecure. And then right after, pretty much right after that is this is, you know, Elizabeth doing this scene, but like needing these repeated mm-hmm. takes because she feels insecure, insecure in what she's That's doing. Cool. It looks like it's, it looks like it's a porno. Or it's, or she's wearing like a bat, like a you know, dollar store on. blonde wig. Yeah. <laughs> like, on it, it's she like, has a snake in her hand. It like, looks like Taylor Lautner. It's like, like <laughs> one key light with like a blue gel over it, and it looks very flat and tacky. Uh, Speaking of Taylor Lautner, do you think he watches and was like, "Damn, that could have been me." Like he looked at Charles Melton, active, and he was like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah." yeah. 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 He shows up places and does like backflips and stuff. <laughs> he does. He's he's very. You mean at the Taylor Swift people are, concert? People are making fun of Simu Liu as as if he's unemployed, but I don't know, man. I mean, uh, that guy's still cashing Marvel checks, probably. Like no, Taylor Lautner is still cashing Twilight checks. Simu That's Liu why he's not working. Like, officially dropped yet? Though. That's what I did. Yeah, no. like, Taylor Lautner didn't come back for Shark Boy and Lava Girl two, the Netflix movie. Yeah. And I'm like, what else were you doing? Right. <laughs> You couldn't come back valuing his time, again? valuing you know, his time. Was. Angling for Simu Liu to be like the front and center of like these two new Avengers movies before all that Reddit stuff <laughs> yeah, uh, came yeah, out. That was tough. We were just talking about before that stuff. stabbing fetish video came out. Oh, oh god, man. I forgot about oh, that. Man. Simu Liu, man. Um, so I knew Chris <laughs> Pratt of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this was a uh, this was a scattered review, but um, uh, Do you think he, we hopped you all think over he the place. Called his agent was like, "Why didn't you get me an audition for Joe?" Who, Chris Seems, Pratt? No, C- oh, Simu Liu. Yeah, probably, right? <laughs> yeah, Chris Pratt. Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was Mario. I'm just wondering why I can't play anybody. I can play anybody. Yeah, I'm I Garfield. <laughs> I'm Mario. quite versatile. Top of his resume, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, the box office receipt yeah. next to it. Well, especially now that the speaking of awards, again, they're adding a category for, like, best box office yeah, achievement. I'm sure it'll which, be Mario. Yeah, I'm sure. which like the the box office achievement is the award. I, I, I gotta be honest. I know some people love Mario. One of my best friends loves Mario. People who say Mario is one of their favorite films of the year, I really gotta. Come I, on, I haven't guys. come across. <laughs> come on, that, guys. That's that's rough, dude. There was a that guy. Was a rough movie. There was a guy on TikTok who was like. Uh, it was like ranking his favorite movies. Was of the it those year. two dumbasses? Like, like the one with the long neck and, and his, his like the other one, the Blu-ray Angel. Yeah, no, it was Angel. those two guys. Yeah, Blu-ray okay. Angel, come on the show. I fucking Friend hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Blu-ray Angel <laughs> will be like, uh, they'll, he'll like quote tweet a Jonathan Majors thing, and he'd be like, "Here are my top five candidates for the new Kang," and it's like, bro, <laughs> Charles Melton looks great in this movie. I think he could play Nightwing. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> his face <laughs> and Zach watching ah! him. He's like, he, like the way he like screams. I, Zach, you gotta play that character in a. You gotta play like a like a like a social he, media. I grifter. like that he wears Batman masks sometimes. In his videos. He makes me so mad. He just makes me so physically angry. Like when when I because I and I t- <laughs> there was that one thing where he was like, um, if if. Fuck, what's his name? If Henry Cavill comes back for Superman, no one will be more excited than me. And then he screamed, yeah. and I literally commented. I was like, ha ha. After I found out that Henry Cavill got dropped. <laughs> I'm 
I'm sorry. He just caught a, the most violent stray. That wasn't yeah. a stray. Yeah. You took direct aim. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it, well, he wasn't meant to. Do you think uh, uh, Joe from May December will return in a further film? At the end of the movie, Joe <laughs> return. Grace will return. Hope so. I want to see a sequel where he like learn. He like takes pottery classes or something. Oh, yeah. Like he, he just, just meets gets, a nice. He meets a nice girl. Just gets his life back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. I want it to open with him at her funeral. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like 45 he's yeah, still got time the December game leaked so I mean we know it's going to be an open world <laughs> yeah. with three protagonists yeah. Yeah, it's supposed yeah, to be yeah. pretty in depth you think you can go into like different apartments and like yeah, wash it's, dishes it's gonna, it's anyway man I don't know um, final thoughts for me I think that it is a, it's a heart we laughed a lot for a movie that we said was so, it's not funny it's, it's not funny kind of light yeah I, I, we, I, there's a lot of heartbreaking stuff in this and it and it is again like um I think a, a brilliant composed bit of satire and it has a lot of interesting things to say about, um, about boundaries and, wow. and, and, and uh, the lines we cross in our lives. Um, it's my girl. I, uh, will pro it's a movie that I'll probably rewatch. It's definitely on my favorites of the year. Yeah. It's um, in my five. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, as far as a rating, I'll go ahead and give it, um, I'll go ahead and give it eight and a half blueberry, muffins or whatever she makes out of Ooh, 10 eight and a half hot dogs pineapple yeah. upside down cake <laughs> out of 10 i think it's really really good i think it's brilliantly acted some of the best work that like natalie portman or julianne moore have done in either yeah, of their careers i think yeah, yeah. not even in the, but just like in in their careers i'm trying to think of what julianne moore has done recently carrie is the only thing i can think of. Yeah. i know there's been more that's 10 years ago. i know carrie, the kids are, are all yeah. right question mark? kids are all right she's kids good right. in that yeah. she's good in that she sleeps with mark didn't Ruffalo. she play she finn does. wolfhard's mom in that movie directed by uh, jesse eisenberg she did when yeah. you finish saving the world yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. completely different kind of role mm -hmm. yeah i i mean I, I love this movie i think it's really great i'm gonna watch it again um Surprisingly breezy for a movie with this subject matter. Yeah, um, yeah. It flies by. Has three of some of the best performances of the year. I think the kids are great. I think it's really funny and morally complex. Um, maybe we want to kind of just watch through the rest of the Todd Haynes movies I haven't Absolutely. seen. I've seen a, I've seen a lot of his more recent movies. I haven't watched like Safe or. I really need um, to see his Velvet Underground. I haven't seen that either. That um, I but, love the Velvet Underground. But he's a he's a filmmaker that you know. Sometimes you see a filmmaker that's been making movies for a while, and you haven't just haven't watched them, and you go, "Oh, like this is why they're such a big deal," is because they have all these moves. Um, I would say I'd give it an eight point five out of ten. I don't know a gimmick for this. Um, Butterflies. Uh, Emancipation Papers for Joe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I give it I give it eight hot dogs out of ten. We don't have enough hot dogs. You don't so. have enough hot dogs. And then smash cut to like a, just a. A grill full that of music hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. It's really well acted, and I was very engaged. I was watching on the fucking train, and I was like very like immersed. Mm -hmm. so like, that's just like just Christopher you. Nolan attended. Mm -hmm. How what? <laughs> watching a movie on your fucking telephone. Telephone. Uh, <laughs> um, Get real. So my rating will be as of right now. I'll give it a, a strong seven point five. Um, uh, Julianne Moore blonde wigs out of ten. You think it's a wig? I think it's her hair. No, no, no. Sorry, Natalie Portman wearing Julianne Moore wigs. Wearing at the end Julianne of the movie. Moore's scalp yeah, yeah, at yeah, 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 yeah. eight point five pitchfork son uh, Mary Kate Letourneau's uh, immortal soul out of ten. Hey, when Natalie Portman goes to the back of that uh, pet store, and oh my god, like simulates the sex. Scene Very by disturbing. Herself? Very disturbing. What was that? Stuff. And then she like laughs. Like, they, it was like they really uh, flatter that real woman by like casting Julianne Moore. <laughs> you are. Look kind of and then you look like Julianne. Moore. That's for sure. I mean, they flattered. I mean, I don't think pe 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 <laughs> people have said that they that they may have done the actual guy a disservice. I don't really agree with this, but they may have done the actual guy a disservice because he was Latino and Joe was Korean. I to be. Honest That's with also you, not the real people. Yeah, and yeah, also yeah, like it's, it's different. To, like, it is. Like, it is slightly. And different, I know yeah. there's like eccentricities based on the race of the person, but at the end of the day, it's like she took advantage of a young kid who was not white yeah. and like she got away with it because he was not white right. so yeah i think she that's exoticized him yeah. he, he had some sort of yeah. power over her and they have yeah. just a picture of charles melton at 13 yeah <laughs> like a goober yeah. yeah poor kid anyway, anyway. um poor 35 year old man. the next movie is uh, about another poor kid yeah uh, james spader jimmy spader yes. <laughs> we'll be back after this second break to talk about sex lies and videotape I remember reading 
somewhere that men learn to love the podcast that they're on and the women become more and more attracted to the man on the podcast. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not true. Uh, I'm right. not, sure that. not true. No? No. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, sure. Does any really <laughs> Maybe we can. When, when you tell women that you're on a podcast, do you think that brings up your marketability or brings it down? Generally, they're like, all you're right, like, no, see thanks. you. No, thanks. Uh, the trick is to not tell them yeah, until you're a few months into yeah, yeah, a relationship. Yeah, yeah. I was told to not put it on my resume. That, that if I put it on my resume, an employer would be like, get the fuck out did of you here. You're some, on a podcast. Did you see someone posted like an old Wild West gun and it had four nozzles and someone said the podcast killer? <laughs> <laughs> Sex, Lies, and Videotape, a 1989 American independent drama film written and directed by Steven Soderbergh. Soderbergh. Um, the plot uh, is about a troubled man played by James. James Spader, who uh, is self-described as impotent, um, but is able to achieve sexual exactly. arousal and completion through the recording of women discussing their own sexual fantasies, which he later in private uh, re- relieves himself. I feel like he's capping. He said he's a he lies all the time. Yeah, he does say he's, yeah. he's a pathological liar, and that's one of like the, the mysteries of who this guy even is, because he just rolls into town. He's and just rich. Ruins you, really, their life. you think he's lying about being impotent? Yeah. But he's like so honest about- I don't know if I think he's lying. I don't know if I think he's lying. Why, Why would he lie about that, that, though? I think he's lying. Because well, that's not really a thing you would, like, fucking brag about. You know what I mean? I, I he's not like, bragging. I feel, like he would make a, I feel like he would make up a lie if it was to make it, like, I don't know. I just don't, I, I feel something. like for that period of the movie, he's just not, that's his whole thing, is he's so, bl- like, yeah. brutally honest. Yeah. Like, and he's, he used to be. Like, he's, he's, a, he's autistically coded. He, yeah. he speaks, oh. like, honestly things. Yeah. Like, somebody's no, he on the he spectrum. A, he said he was a pathological liar. He was, yeah. but he's... Uh, I, well, I, I feel like the thing with someone who was once is right. you don't like, know when, do you, when, yeah. are when they, they stop. I feel like he's not lying. But also, it could be. I mean, the movie suggests that there is some kind of emotional reason he's he's impotent. It's not like it's not, it, he he might just be only can only get it up for women that he is emotionally connected to. Yeah. Or, I'm sure this is intentionally ambiguous right. yeah. because yeah, yeah, yeah. we never find out if he if actually he's actually has sex with Andy McDonald. No. Well, sleeps uh, he with most the sister. Definitely does. Most we never definitely. find out if he sleeps with the no, sister. No, no, no. But he has to, definitely does definitely sleeps with uh, with uh, uh, Andy yeah. McDonald, yeah. yeah. who looks exactly like her daughter. Margaret oh my Pollard. god, I was fucking Looks thinking exactly about like that her. last yeah, night. Does, I was yeah. thinking about that last There's night. There's moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, there she is. Like, there, yeah. I was like, she looks like that girl that's in every movie now, and then I, I looked know, it yeah. up and I was like, it's no, her fucking she mom. She looks like the girl that Quentin Tarantino got like 80 shots of her feet once upon Please a time in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's her? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, that's the thing that jogged your memory, huh? Yikes. Hey. Hey. Really? Uh, uh, there's nothing I can say, is there? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the feet were uh, cinematically... Do we ever see that lady's feet? Yes, we do. But no, that was one thing I noticed. When no, she's, we do whenever she's with the therapist, I'm like, how close are you two? Oh, yeah. yeah. All of a sudden, I thought one she scene, and the they were therapists the same... were sleeping together yeah. at some point. He also, I'm like, are you certified? Like, just like, he's kind of listening to her, and he's, he's like, like mm. did you masturbate? I'm like, where? <laughs> Sometimes shit with the therapist gets like, too yeah, close yeah, to yeah, comfort. Yeah, yeah, oh, really? That's, that's happened to me where so I've gotten like really. I've never spoken about that with my therapist. The one experience that I've had, the dude pretty much just let me vent, and then he was like, all right, that's our time. Yeah. That's Sometimes they let you I've, do that. I've spoken too. about sex with my therapist. I mean, it's it's weird, but yeah. like, that's what they're It's awkward, for. but yeah, I, yeah I feel you like can't lie. If you it. trust them. We should talk about the plot of this movie. Let's talk about well, the, the, I, the Just to ex- explain the reason that I, I settled on this as a pairing is because I, I, you know, yeah, there are similarities in terms of like both movies are about sexuality in some way or desire and, and, and what that does to people, but also like this intru- the the intruder, the sudden arrival of like an outside influence that yeah. unearths all of right, this right. this no, dirty laundry. Yeah. And so um, James Spader in this is kind of, you know, what Natalie Portman is in May, December, even down to the fact that he, although it's not commercial, um, uh, even down to the fact that although his art is not commercial, he's still creating something out of yeah. this situation yeah, yeah, yeah. between um, Andy McDowell's character, who is Anne. Um, and her husband, John, John, who is John Mulaney. Lawyer. That, I, that was my only review. Literal yeah. name. Hey! You know what this reminded me of, though? You, you know, like, those YouTube videos where people will go back and find, like, archival tapes from the 80s of, like, p- people doing, like, acting reels where they're like, honey, you got another thing coming, and then, like, an action pose, that kind of, like, awkward stuff. I feel like if he waited, like, 20 or 30 years, he could pull all of these online and uh, assemble, like, a cult following just because there's such interesting tapes. Oh, he'd win, oh, he'd win oh, yeah. Sundance Film Festival if he had assembled Well, I'm, I'm not yeah. even saying, like, make it, like, a documentary. I just feel like if one day he decided to do, like, you know, an abstract, like, art thing yeah. and make yeah, an yeah. installation with all oh, the yeah. tapes or oh, put easily. them all up on, like, easy. Vimeo or YouTube or something. Yeah. He's like, about five yeah. years too early. Yeah, he's about five years yeah. too early, but, yeah. He'd be seen as, like, a trailblazer. So, Soderbergh, this, 
this should put him on the map, dude. It's yeah. like, I mean, Soderbergh now I didn't is know like that he also wrote it. He's he's like he wrote it in eight days in the back of a car. It's a great wow. screenplay. Yeah, mm-hmm. on, on the, yellow the legal pad paper. Was the, That's most, amazing. the screenplay was the most impressive. I, I, I mean, Soderberg, the dialogue is great. Soderbergh is like known as like the workhorse of the Hollywood. Like he, I remember in the pandemic, he said he had written three scripts in like six months. Like mm. he just and he like shoots a movie a year, DPs edits his own movies. His phone now. Not no he he'll I mean he shot a magic mic on a fucking um, I forgot that he did magic mic that's how could fucking you crazy it's a masterpiece that's, crazy. <laughs> that's so crazy that he did magic mic I mean he's just kind of an omnivoric director and it's mm. weird and he's like kind of a guy that you can't even really you can kind of pin down his like frenetic style but he doesn't really have the way Tarantino right has like a box he sits himself into Soderbergh kind of does everything trying to do the same you know movie I mean twice. all his movies are heists wink wink sure. but like but like they're not all the same so like watching this and kind of seeing the origin story I know your review was like watching a director find their style mm-hmm. there are bits where you're kind of like oh there he is mm-hmm. like where he goes from the tape to real life mm-hmm. that was cool um, which was cool but but generally it's kind of like watching someone and you're like oh like you you really did develop in ten years, mm-hmm. like from this to Oceans. He's a totally different director. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and well, he's working with movie thing. stars. Yeah, by, yeah. like yeah. 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 Because... yeah. Were they movie stars yet though? And by, oh, George Clooney. Well, yeah, but I'm, I'm I mean, I mean here. Oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. No, not not at that point. No, not anyone in this cast. Um, it's a film like you, you want to not be able to be put into a box, right? You want to yeah. constantly be kind of reinventing yourself. I think so, Zach. When when I mentioned this movie, you you had an interesting uh, connection to I it. Did. You said that you yeah. did a scene study based on yeah. this. Yeah, it was uh, no, I was fucking John, which yeah. kind of sucked. Awesome. I, it was <laughs> it was it was kind of cool though because it was I don't know. I just remember I don't remember a lot from it, but it was a really intense character study thing. Like it was it was pretty in depth, and we didn't even watch the movie. Like it was yeah. purely just going yeah. off of the like, lines. The lines, mm-hmm. um, and I just remember it being like really challenging you know Mm. what i mean just because on paper like the dialogue is great but on paper some of those exchanges are really difficult to nail down like the way that those actors like they fucking kill those Mm, roles and just how natural the dialogue feels i i remember like that was a really difficult thing for me like even playing like douchebag john like it was just I don't know. They're just. They're, well, the, was it a douchebag scene? Was it like the scene at the end where he? I think it's like I cup to. No, no, no. I think it's when I swear. I think it's when uh, Annie McDowell is like I want okay, out so of this marriage. Okay, so it was the scene with the wife. Okay, yes, cool. I think it's when she's really like, difficult scene to watch. Think, yes, I think all of those characters have like a real interiority that's yeah. like pretty textured. Yes. Like by the end, you like know who all of those. They're people very are. laden. And the fact that he is so kind of like fractured and like hurt by like finding that tape, yeah. to where he needs to think of like the one thing that he can use against his buddy, yeah. and like that should be like a moment of triumph for him. Like I, I, I got you, motherfucker. But really, yeah. it's it's kind of like it's pathetic. Yeah, it's because that. That was that college. Yeah. You were yeah, yeah. You were in fucking. Co- you're yeah. talking about something you did to the guy 12 years ago, yeah. and also like you were a fucking dick for doing it. Like, yeah. You shouldn't yeah. feel yeah. triumphant. For and doing he, it. he went up you to you. This is a tape. Yeah. It's a tape he has. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I um. To your point, Zach, regarding the the acting and 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 to what you said about the screenplay, there's, you know. Uh, there's like a magic that you see in very few films where you have a script that is written and you see this a little bit actually in like succession. There's a script that's written tightly enough to, to, to move the plot, but there's like, there's like it's scenario based. And I think you work with and trust your actors enough that like, because this, there's some of this that feels improvised yeah. or I, you can't script some of the way they, it's, they overlap yeah, each yeah, other and the so way that natural. they, yeah, the way it's, they talk. Yeah. It's so natural. But, but I feel like a lot of the, the natural, like, artifices like like when she has that uh, cup of the iced tea and the rattling of the ice cubes in the iced tea mm-hmm. to like fill in the spaces when they're not talking yeah. feels so intentional yeah. it yeah. feels like that's to pull out like the kind of quotidian like pattern of how people talk when it's sensitive information mm. and there's those long spaces when you're thinking of what to say and there's that silence between yeah. two people like mm-hmm. like that feels like it was something that was on the page mm-hmm. you know what I yeah. mean mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's really uh, uh, the succession scenario is really interesting and I, now I'm thinking about all the ways I'm sure Soderbergh's f- filming style has influenced a show like that because of the way you know even here it's like almost like the cam- his camera is always not just like a participant in what's happening but is like it has a point of view it has a point of view mm-hmm. it's like eagerly kind of looking around he does it in the Nick a lot he does it in High Flying Bird and he does it here where it's like the camera almost seems interested in who has mm-hmm. the information like it's yes. like it's always kind of like yeah. moving 
to try to catch the information yeah. and try to find the person who landing it on it would be most painful. Like when during the the dinner scene when uh, James Spader's asking Anne about yes. her sister yeah. and it yeah. like it's just like panning like across like John and he just kind of like grimaces and then he like looks up. Yeah. But then it kind of it goes off of him. Yeah. Yeah. But you're still you know what I mean? Like, like what's going just, on there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you think he used one camera or do you think he had two? I'm not sure. We should figure I mean, this is his first feature, right? Yeah. He couldn't have had more. Well, I don't know. Maybe he had only had one. It was a million dollar budget, I think, which I would have like been a you, lot. You would very carefully shot list it because it, it really that scene where they're at the dinner table. I, I feel like where the cameras place is kind of intentional. It feels like you're, you know, like a fly on the wall. Yeah, you know what I mean, like yes. you're an observer, yeah. and maybe this is something you shouldn't be seeing. Mm-hmm. I I can't see anything about um, uh, production details that, to that degree. Although a fun little tidbit, apparently. The role of John would have been played by Tim Daly, but delays in completing the financing led to Peter Gallagher's Tim Daly. getting the role instead. A uh, voice actor for Superman oh, in uh, uh, Superman the Animated Series. I, I have a question for everybody, but specifically because this is a mm. thing that Dan is really interested in. Yeah, yeah sure. Which is like, the, I guess more of a comment or a discussion point is like, this paired with Spike Lee's early work in the 80s, and I think mm. this comes out the same year as Do the Right Thing, really? feels like it launches American indie film again. Right. Like, I feel like Sex Lives Videotape and Spike Lee's three movies leading up to Do the Right Thing. Slacker. From, from Slacker. Link later. It, feels like it's, it feels like this is the start of that. I mean, this yeah. one's Khan, and he's the youngest guy to win Khan uh, at the time. And it feels like people... This one? This one? It wins Khan. Oh, that's awesome. And it also goes... There's, like, a famous, like, Sundance story where it, like, shows it's Sundance, and the first screening is, like, kind of, like, half full. Mm-hmm. And people are like, what is this? And they go to see it, and they're like, this is incredible. I love success. And then, and then like, that. you cannot get into any other Word screenings of, mouth, of yeah. this. It, which is how it used to be, which yeah. is kind of the point of Sundance. But I, I, for you, it's like, what do you think it was about this film and about Linklater and about Spike's work that had a new generation of filmmakers go, okay, now I can we do it. Really you know, seeing stuff like that from like the studio, were we? Like, like think Not of really. what like the old movie stars who like are still working well into the eighties. They're doing stuff with like on Golden Pond, mm-hmm. you know, things like mm-hmm. that. These kind of like you know melodramas for like older people, and that's kind of the new blood. You know, the, the American Indies, and I mean, it was like that in the 70s, and yeah. then those guys kind of get assimilated into the system, but think about Easy Rider, the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm-hmm. these are movies from, like, young people of their kind of counterculture. It's the yeah. same thing with Slacker, Do the Right Thing, yeah, and, and this. You know? and even yeah, Julie, definitely. It's it's like, and even you see something like, I think Daughters of Dust comes out a year later, mm-hmm. the Julie Dash movie. I think people are just like, A, film, Dude, film is 90s getting, indie, it was fucking crazy. Well, I think it's like, I think it's what you're saying, which is that people are hungry for, like, something that's not Back to the Future, which Back yeah. to the Future is great, but like maybe not what any everyone wants to see all the time. Right. And then I think it's also that filmmaking got um, cheaper, so right. that you could make a movie with like your buddies, James Spader, right out of acting school or yeah. whatever. And theoretically, Sundance was a thing that was actually a thing you could get into back yeah. then, which mm-hmm. unlike now, where you and can't. When like in the early seventies, when uh you know cameras became like consumer grade, yeah. you could get like a, a wind up sixteen yeah. millimeter yeah. or something. That's when we get Easy Rider and yeah. Texas Chainsaw and yeah. stuff. It's kind of the new wave of that. If, if flip that, flops, you know? yeah. yeah. So maybe the 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 pattern of of film history is that there has to be like there has to be a mainstream, obviously, for you to be different, yeah. right? There has to be something to distinguish yourself and then, from. And of course, those. Yeah. And then and of course, those breakout people get absorbed and become back into the machine and become yeah, the next. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is a product of like post-war media mm-hmm. all the time. Like uh, the French New Wave is in response to uh, World War yeah, II. France and being fucked and everyone's yeah, just and, taking cameras around. The, but it's an interesting thing you're saying, Justin, which is like something that I think a lot of film people have taken notice of this year, a lot of film writers, which is that there kind of has to be a new wave of stuff mm-hmm. soon or the industry will die, which is a situation we've been in bef- before. Yeah. Uh, most famously, like the 60s, like they were, the, the the big companies were kind of maxing out what they could do, right. and, and you needed a new group of people. And it's definitely not good when the companies like A24 are getting like absorbed, absorbed. by Apple and but, stuff. You know, you, you need like a, like a, you know, boots on the ground kind arm. of. But, yeah. but the difference is, Justin, I think unfortunately is that I think in the 90s and the 70s, there was a market for super indie film like mm-hmm. you could release it like melvin van peoples makes uh sweet sweet, sweet, sweet back. back and like personally <laughs> that movie's fucking awesome that, but, like personally dis- distributes it like is able to get a distribution is there any other movie where there's like sex fights 
No. Uh-huh. I think it's just that. You got to see Sweet Sweetback, buddy. Sweet Sweetback. Zach would hate that. Yeah, he would movie. hate Sweet Sweetback. So cool. it's, I love that movie, dude. It's I uh, it's The final act of that like is so it? abstract. It's so much fun. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, but but I think I think the difference is like you every once in a while you get a skin of a rank, which is like an a sure. ultra low budget movie that yeah. breaks through. A lot. Yeah. But I, I don't think unfortunately I don't know and this is this is not me being depressing but i don't know if we if the industry is set up anymore where you could get a sex lies and videotape that sneaks out and doesn't immediately go to streaming mm-hmm. like i think i think something like this doesn't That's true. do what this did I, yeah. I just don't think we were in that you'd industry have to anymore distribute it yeah you'd have to do what the safties did with daddy long legs yeah. where they're literally there's those pictures of them on the subway platforms with like signs yeah. taped to their chest yeah. that say like this movie exists yeah mm. is where you can go see directly it. to ifc and be yeah, like hey yeah. can you can you package it i or love something? ifc man i love that they're still one of the last bastions for yeah, having i hope, they don't, get, like I hope they don't get bought up i'm um i i to return to the to the movie itself for a second i'm um one of the things that struck me while watching it is, um, you know, the depiction of, of different kinds of affairs, right? So yeah. obviously you have John, who's engaged in a sexual affair with Anne's younger sister, Cynthia, um, played by Laura Sanjacomo. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, like, is a character that at first I didn't, like, for the first 20 minutes, I didn't really get... Mm. Who she's, she's kind of flat. Yeah, right? and then she's sister. and and then literally like when she comes to Spader's house and yeah. gives that inter- the interview, I'm like she she opens yeah. up yeah. opens up and emerges, and it's obviously very beautifully written, but also her performance is so like delicate, and mm-hmm. um, uh, I just I think it's fantastic, but I also am interested in the way that the movie, um, you know, contrasts what's happening between her and John and what's happening between. Uh, uh, Graham and Anne, yeah. her fascination with Graham, you know, in spite of herself, right? In spite yes. of the fact that she's unnerved by what she finds out that right. he's doing and, and, and who he is. And then the way that, like, her relationship with him winds up making Cynthia feel guilty for the affair she's having. Yeah. You know, it's it's such a, like, fascinating, I don't know, like, yeah. that's, what do you guys make make of that? What do you, how did you, did did it res- did you respond to it in the same way? Throwing out questions here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing them out. <laughs> Last show of the year, you know? Um, no, I mean, but it, it, it's, uh, I think it just, you yeah. know, you often, yeah. Yes. We often talk about in real yes. life. We often do, save me, save me. No, we often talk about in real life how emotional affairs may be more de- yeah, uh, yeah. catastrophic and deadly yeah. Than, yeah. than physical ones. But often the truth is that, like, Again, boundaries, Mm -hmm. they're hard to to delineate. Yeah. You know, sometimes the physical becomes emotional. Oftentimes the emotional can lead to physical. I mean, it's all, I mean, the relationships in that movie are just fucking amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, No, the other one. Yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, Yeah, no, I mean, the relationships, I mean, it's just cool because you see the difference between John and Graham. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, like, that's the whole thing is both and. And Cynthia, like they, they thought that Graham was gonna be like John, right? right and that right. makes and she's like, I don't want him here, right? Which is kind of funny because she thinks he's gonna be like him. And Cynthia wants to go see him because right. she thinks he's gonna be like John. But that, you know what I mean? Like they both um, wind up getting different. Yes, results. exactly. Yeah. And it's just like the it's it's just fascinating the whole thing with with like lies, right? Like uh, Graham being like, no, like he doesn't want to fucking talk to John anymore because he's like, I think John's a liar, mm. you know, and and. Like, and he's so, he's just, he's upfront with her. You know what I mean? Like, that's the whole thing is their relationship. It's immediately honest, like brutally honest. Like they're talking about like sex and masturbation, I think like on, like when they're just like, they, they go they're apartment right hunting. Oh, it's oh, like yeah. the second day they met. <laughs> um, and well, the thing about it, it's like, who else in her life does she? We don't know if she really has very many friends or associates. Yeah. Like, Cause she quit her job. Yeah. Seems like a shut For the marriage. Yeah. yeah. So she has her sister and she has right. her husband. And then this is this the third party yeah. who you can actually, the therapist too. Yeah. And then here's this <laughs> other person you can her talk buddy, to. The therapist. Yes. About things yeah. that I can't talk to anyone else about. Well, because, you know? and isn't it, I mean, in our own lives, I think, you know, it, sometimes it's a bit easier to discuss private things with a stranger. Right. A stranger, sure. But also, like, sometimes I think, you know, we have friends with like interests that like match like some of our very niche mm-hmm. interests and uh-huh. things that we really want to talk about and yeah. then you bond at that person over that yeah. right yeah um, he's i mean i think he looks at Anne as a as a as a project maybe and i don't know if it's i mean this is well like you who who believe sternly that like he is lying to her maybe it is a manipulative yeah. sort of thing maybe um, i don't think so. i think he's like 
I don't no, know. I think he, he's just interested. You know, what I don't. I, mean? I don't think he's manipulating her. I think. I don't know if it's true that he's impotent. Mm. I don't know if that means that everything about him is a manipulation of mm-hmm. her. We because don't really know what, what he's there to like. Do. Really do. And yeah. she's, yeah. Like, she's, she's like, she's like, she's like, job, she's like, like, do you have a job? And he's like, no, I, I get money from under the bed. With a fuck, like, yeah. And she's like, well, <laughs> he's like, that's gonna run out. And he's like, don't. Worry. And before that, he was living out of his convertible. Well, I, yeah. I think, yeah. I think the thing is that he's a rich kid. Yeah. Who's who's like gotten Not tired drifter, of yeah. doing whatever he's doing and has like decided to drift over here, which is what rich people yeah. do. They mm-hmm. just like yeah. they like oh I don't want to work at my dad's company. I'm gonna fucking drift for a while. You get a yeah. van and yeah. do van life. And yeah, but he like has nice yeah. clothes and yeah. you know, so it's like he's getting it from John. Somewhere. Doesn't think so. <laughs> John fucking roasts him on his oh, yeah. black like button down in his jeans. He's yeah. like, "What are you an Undertaker?" It's like, what are you? <laughs> "Look at your suspenders." And then, she, and then she's like, "And then she's like, I like the way he dresses." I'm like, right. "John, you should be worried." Yeah. John, you don't understand. You're losing all the women in your you life. Should be That's concerned, right. John. When John That's is about true. to get he fired at the both end, of them. he's yeah, about to get he's fired at the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was your uh, What was your review? Uh, me and the bad bitches. I, I pulled, pulled. being autistic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Um, yeah. yeah. There is. Uh, uh, there's a bit of humor in here with the the bar fly. Um, at Cynthia's job, I, I, who like that is hits on both of them. The screenplay that I wasn't where the guy keeps showing. You don't need like, it. But we're both uh, wearing blue, right? You don't need it. Yeah, we're it both was yeah. Red. <laughs> it felt like a disconnect it, it from the rest like of the movie. Like a friend of the director, and he was like, yeah. oh, "I'll get you." For yeah. Well, and I'm like, it, it's just like the the rest of the actors are so nuanced and yeah. so honest. I was like, who the fuck? That, that was, was probably like, just very, like his childhood friend. Yeah. I want to be an actor. Yeah. Very in your face about it. Some uh, some nice subtle moments of filmmaking here. Mm-hmm. I love the way they visually communicate the uh, transfer of power in the scene where uh, Andy McDowell is the name of the actress. Andy, Andy McDowell, McDowell. Is, do, is you know filming her tape and um, she picks up the camera and starts filming uh, yeah. and cuts to the POV. Freaks out, yeah. The camera and the, yeah. the frame swaps and like stuff. It. That's a really yeah. nice yeah. little kind of subtle uh, visual yeah. you know uh, way of conveying yeah. that. He's beating his meat um, to like these grainy black and is white. He, is, he jack- <laughs> is, he, is he jacking <laughs> off to him? Yeah, he's naked when he's watching. Okay. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. That's just part of the experience. I thought, I thought maybe it's just because he's eccentric and weird. Like maybe he the, doesn't. Like, when maybe he's, he just likes yeah. to watch them. You he's know? watching one tape and he's like tearing up, and then he like turns to the window. <laughs> and it's like, oh my god! Um, it, a, another great <laughs> Michelangelo. <laughs> another great little moment of filmmaking I really like. I, I talked about this in my review. Uh, is when you know Spader gets his ass kicked. He's camping outside. You know, kind of punched back to the wall like a little kid who's yeah. in like detention or whatever. He gets sent out in the hall because. Yeah. Being a class clown, that mm-hmm. kind of thing, and we just see the silhouette of, uh, of John, John Mulaney, yeah. um, John in, Mulaney. in there sitting down and watching the TV, and the way the light is casting over him makes his silhouette kind of tower. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, who yeah, yeah. is minimized in that little triangle third yeah, of the corner. screen? Yeah, he's in the uh, yeah, I just thought the it's way great. they conveyed that power yeah. imbalance was really beautiful. R- really there, nice, subtle yeah. directorial choices yeah. here. Yeah, and I mean, it's like I don't know. It's it's like. I don't know why I'm finding it hard to talk about this movie because I was so like invested in it, but there are just so many moments that feel like specific character work and like script yeah. work. Like when Anne is uh, with her sister, it's the first time that they're together and they're in her sister's house, and she's just like going through her shit, like she's yeah. just tidying up, yeah, yeah, yeah. and she like picks up the plants. And I think in that, like you know, she I, I, maybe I'm knows. stupid, but like yeah, yeah was like, that the earring? She finds well, no, yes, but that's, she, that's okay. way later. Like, this is when... That's what plants the idea. Yes, and yeah. she's just talking about Graham to her sister, yeah, yeah, and her yeah. sister's like, well, I want to see him. Give me his a fucking address. Like, Are you a <laughs> lunatic? But she, like, picks up the plant, and she's like, I wish you wouldn't talk like that. And it's like, it's just these subtle moments yeah. that are off the... She's she you know so I mean? fervent about sleeping with every man that her sister is interested Classic, in. Classic, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just, But it's like, it's good, specific character work that I... When I was in school, like I definitely was like, "Fuck, I don't need that shit." But then you watch it, and yeah. you're like, "God, this like it yeah. is so interesting. it's, it's good. so it's good." And you might in. not like immediately be like, yeah, exactly. if, "If I were a writer for the New York Times, I would say it's it's intimately felt." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's 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 stuff that I you might not like immediately pick up, but yeah. you just subconsciously feel it. You know what well, I mean? Yeah. It's like you know, you know, this is why, and and not every director does this, and not every production has time for it. But you know, I look at this even from like. I, this is why I look at rehearsal yeah, and prep and table yeah. work the same way that I look at like drills and martial arts yeah. or like bo- like yeah. when a Needed. boxer hits the speed bag, they're not going to go into the ring and do this. Right. Yeah. But it's it's building an attribute. Yes, exactly. And in the same way that like you know when you're an actor and you you sit down, you get Andy uh, and McDow- Andy McDowell and Andy McDowell. Andy McDowell, but Man, the character's name is Andy Anne. With an eye, which is yeah. really cute. 
Uh, Andy McDowell and Laura Sanjacoma, you sit them in a room, you say, okay, your sisters, yeah. when you were younger, you pulled her hair. Yeah, just improv. Yes. This yes. is yes. how, yeah. you know, this, yes. and that's been your life yeah. ever since. Yes. And now it's in everything they it do. It feeds yeah. when yeah. you actually it, it, perform. It fills yeah. it out. It's like if you, if you are, if, if I know some directors will like write out scenes that they know will not appear in the movie. Yeah. Just so the actor has it. I think, yes. I think yeah. Lorraine like does They're stuff like that. Memory. Like yeah. when, when we reviewed Emma and Spencer, I was researching how Lorraine approaches like, dialogue and how he just again i talked about this a little bit earlier in this very review but just the idea of like you create yes. scenarios you tell your actors this is your objective this yeah. is your objective figure it out yeah, yeah. maybe give them a line or so that they need to hit but yeah. like you're yeah. not it's I not love, a skeleton I love that kind it's of really part. interesting it's i so wouldn't want to do it all the time yeah i yeah, like yeah. to have a script sometimes oh but definitely oh, obviously definitely. but it's yeah. a, it's a cool thing to keep you especially uh, if you're stuck and you know that's the thing is like you you can look at someone honestly more like John, like I think John and maybe Cynthia, that's her name, right? Mm. I think those are, on paper, I think if you look at the character breakdowns, John and Cynthia are the less complex characters. You know what I mean? Just like looking, you're like, John's a douchebag, right? Which is actually, that's kind of what's cool thinking back on it that I had to try to do character work for him, yeah. right? Because he's just an asshole, but to like, but he even feels complex. And it's, yeah. again, it's subtle, but it's his deliveries. Like just the way that he... I don't know, just the way that he does some of these scenes, some of these lines, like there's like a layer of softness to him mm -hmm. that you're not expecting. Yeah, he's even a with, shark. Yeah. yeah. When she, um, when she, when Anne confronts him about the affair mm. and she tells him like, don't, don't lie to me. Oh I don't know God. what I'll do if you, if I find out you yeah. lied to me or something like that. And, and like, <laughs> and he continues to lie, of course, but there's a moment I think in his performance where he's like, yes, I, I, I don't want to, yeah. but I, yeah. I don't. Dude, there's, no there's no way. <laughs> I have to. And, it's yeah. your sister. And, it's yeah. not even like my assistant uh, or something. Yeah, but yeah. he's, but he's like, I think, I think it's fair to admit that he probably is having affairs. This isn't the first affair he's right, had. Right. I, I, I just no, sure. probably. You know, but, I mean, yeah. I think I would imagine that it's also again thinking about character work. Like Andy, Anne has probably shared with her husband. Oh, growing up, my sister always got what the I attention wanted. from the guys, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And he probably knows that. Yeah. And the fact that he's doing it, probably, even though he is doing it, probably does make him feel guilty. guilty. Yeah. I love that one line that she says, like, you, you know, I would just try and do everything that I knew my sister wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. If I thought that was something my sister would do, like, yeah, I wouldn't do it. It, yeah. like, reveals everything about that character in, like, two sentences. Yeah. Dan, did you see Sanctuary this year with Margaret Qualley? This, they're, they're, Margaret Qualley did... She's in everything. She did, she is. But she, she did, did a Claire a, Denis movie She, did, really she did a movie with uh, Christopher Abbott this year, which is a two-hander. Oh, she's the dominatrix, Yes, right? a okay, two-hander yeah. inside of a hotel oh, yeah, room. Yeah. And it, it does have, like, DNA from this movie in it. She's playing a complete... I'm like sure she that. watched this. I was like, I want do my version of it yeah 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 it's Dan, you mentioned some filmmaking things. The last note I have on the on the technical side of the film is that um I really uh, appreciate the choice to not put uh, the choice he made with the phone conversations, they sound they don't oh sound like God. there's a phone filter that on them. That freaks me out. They're just yeah. right in. It's almost as if they're that in the room. That scared me. I won't lie. With headphones, it's like the voices are like right. That's in your yeah. like I jumped. Like, like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nothing like that. It's mixed very. <laughs> Very, Wait, very no, no, well. I the one, look at the one I found. She still looks good. All right, damn. Bro, that is a beautiful woman. You're going to tell me the little gray hair. It's not the gray oh. hair. It's really oh, not. She's very beautiful. Uh, audience, you can't see this, but Listen. Zach and Wes are shaming. We're uh, clowning. We're not <laughs> shaming. I've never found Annie McDowell particularly attractive, but that's just... Well, you know what's funny is I was thinking... Laura Sanjacomo, on this, on the other hand. When Cynthia was like, oh, I couldn't do it like the beautiful... You know what I mean? Like, it's like that thing of like, my sister's prettier yeah, than me. I'm like, I can... It's... it's You can see in this movie what that casting is. That, yes, that they are two different kinds of attractive yeah. and they may both be insecure about the other yes exactly where, where Anne feels like more demure more like a yes. doll a princess it's it's yeah. good casting because yeah. the sister is like she you know she's like naturally she's confident she's more sexual you know yeah. what i mean like it's it's really good just the way that yeah because uh, it's funny because james spader in pretty in pink he plays like john basically oh yeah. you've seen that yeah I he's haven't. just like a douchebag and he's so good at it he's it's really kind of what fucking he's cool known for doing yeah playing a douchebag and it's yeah. so but he plays graham so quietly. so perfectly mm -hmm. like his voice it's just like it's softer he's not even using his spader voice i know dude that's what i said i was like his voice is higher than yeah. it normally U is. usually it's down here yeah it's down here it's like you're a bitch uh, like just like you know what I mean? the like, robert I'll california james, yeah james spader with the mullet fucking disarmed me man dude, <laughs> what dude. is this you you never even th like looking at him now you can yeah. never even imagine that he, he was pretty in a mullet and yeah. driving a convertible dude, back yeah. in the day i won't lie pretty in pink james spader like that that dude is he looks a hot? stud yeah he's just yeah, he's he just 
is. <laughs> I, I tweeted this and no one. It didn't get. It didn't get the play it needed. But uh, 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 like, Downey and hello, come on. Sexy. Yeah, he looks good. What are we talking? Spader about? Spader and Downey need to be in a movie again together yeah, and not buddies. superhero. They're they're, buddies. And they're they part of the same. Apparently, uh, they were uh, in Downey a, um, less than zero. Spader to do. Uh, that was a, <laughs> that's a movie. I didn't. I, it's Jesus. Yeah, wait, less than zero. We did that scene. Oh yeah, we did. Hey, that's funny. We did that we scene. Did, I played. Uh, he played Robert did, Downey. Did, did, did Didn't uh, I think? I think when they were shooting that movie, they really they told exactly. Downey to really go out and get fucked up. Mm. To go out and get fucked up so that he could really get saved. And that's in that. Oh movie. shit! Yeah. I remember doing the character work with you. Yeah, like that was yeah. cool. You know, it's stuff like that where I'm like, man, I wish I could fucking do that I'm, over. I'm, I'm yeah. gonna try and work on like a, a real the thing I'm writing right now. I have a part for myself because I'm trying to start to like market myself as an actor again. That's great. Dan applied. Yeah, to film school, awesome. by the way, everybody. Hey, hey, congrats! And, and, and Wes wrote me a, I did, a I glowing did. rec that was beautiful. Oh, Speaking of cool. recs, I I wrote one for Marissa Tabby for our social media manager, just like oh. on behalf of all of us. Uh, but they contacted me for the rec, but I kind of signed it like oh yeah, great. The medium more, yeah, I absolutely, just you absolutely, for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you, Marissa. She's doing Thank you, great. Marissa. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. So, uh, sex lies and videotapes. Final ratings and thoughts. Uh, I would say reanimate. I think it's. Uh, I don't think it's the yeah. best of Soderbergh's work. I think he gets better, but I think there is a lot of good here, and you can kind of see him start to peek out mm-hmm. of the movie. And uh, congrats to him on a thirty-five yeah. year career. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I would need to be reminded of like his other movies because I like Magic Mike. I like Oceans. Out of and sight. Stuff. Out of sight. I haven't seen it. But, or but uh, traffic, Logan Lucky, No Aaron Sudden Move, and Brockovich. Uh, uh, the seen part of movie. That. Is it the remake? And I know Soderbergh yeah, did a, a remake of, of the Tarkovsky movie Solaris. Yes, good movie. Uh, his his with, remake. Yeah, with Clooney. With Clooney. Yeah. The original is one of my favorites. Yeah, it's not as good um, as the Tarkovsky movie, but it's good. Yeah, it's good no one's film. as good as Tarkovsky. Contagion. He also did. Oh my anyway. God, Contagion. Oh wait, did, then uh, he the did. Seen, did he did side effects? He did as side well? effects. Yeah, as well. yeah, I saw both. Of them. Like oh, Tatum. he might. Channing Tatum kind of owes him his career, bro. Probably. Kind of. Yeah, because he did GI Joe and Soderbergh. And was like, hey, no more of that. Twenty One Jump Street. He was he was that, you know? barely yeah. inside. That's one of my. Uh, of his movies that I've seen, this is my favorite. I really like it. I would give it a reanimate for sure. I, yeah. you know, wa- if I watch this again, I would probably just gonna go higher. I think. Yeah. Because I think I gave it four stars, and then I took down the star rating and just like left a heart. Because I think it's great, but I think like giving it like you know a number score is like a disservice to like sure. material like this mm-hmm. you know sure. uh, everyone's gonna get a different takeaway from it it's a great screenplay um i really like it so i personally am gonna give it an immortal which is Whoa. i know i know i know <laughs> and here's why it's here and honestly Normally it's i'm the one who like gives the, shit the really high ratings and you guys are like what the fuck? i know yeah <laughs> it's because i think it's an actor's dream like yeah, i was just yeah. watching this yeah. i'm like i'm stealing so many things from everyone in this like it's just I don't know. I just I would watch it again just to like look at these performances and be like, how can I incorporate this into my self tapes? And then, of course, when I actually start really booking things into my like yeah. paid yeah, roles. James Spader in a six coming days. soon. Yeah. Zach Palomo coming soon to a screen yeah, near yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll give like it a critic would eat that up though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Cool. This, guy. <laughs> yeah. this guy's cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll give it a uh, high reanimate as well. I was very surprised by it. While I I know that I that I like the Ocean's movies and. And Soderbergh, to me, seems like a director that I probably really would like. Similar to you, I haven't watched a lot. Yeah. This has encouraged me to seek out more. Um, I love how he works with actors. I love how he writes. Yeah, I, I, I think he's. Uh, I think it's it's a fantastic debut, and we should all be so lucky. Crazy yeah, that's a first film. It's a great like statement yeah. of intent. I would yeah. give. I would give anything to play James Spader's role. <laughs> well, let's remake as, it. As, as I told, yeah. let's remake it. <laughs> as I told Justin yesterday, I yeah. want to play this role more than I want World Peace. Yeah. Wow. wow. You and said it I quickly on the took mic. that back. Wow. And I quickly took that back. Wow. And I quickly took that back. <laughs> and one hand is stopping what's happening in Ukraine. In one, in the other in one second, I gave my. I put the, <laughs> the black other mill. red carpet with Zoe Kravitz. Stand. Yikes! Um, it wouldn't be Zoe Kravitz. It'd be like in the Laura Zent. Oh, Sandra Comer. It would be Jenna Ortega. It would be. Uh, in the Laura Zent. Uh, As Cynthia. Uh, it would 100% be like someone like that. Yeah. yeah, but then it would have to be like who who could be like J- Jacob Andy, Andy would play Oh, yeah. It would be Jacob Alordi, and then it would be uh, you guys are going to shit all over me for saying the obvious choice. If it's Jenna Ortega's playing the, the younger yeah, daughter, Cynthia. the older daughter is going to have you played the, by who? The therapist. Oh, no. say Rachel Zegger? It's, it has to be. It has oh. to be. The, the therapist would be like, uh, I feel like now that therapist would be James Spader. Which is funny. <laughs> <That'd be> funny. <laughs> like, like with the years. That dude was intense. No, he'd be really role. scary. He was good. He was good, but I was like, "You're sir." Hey, where's Ultron? Is he coming back to the MCU? Can he? Don't please? worry about it. Hey, please. Let's, let's just drop. Hey, please, please. 
Hey. <laughs> there are no strings on me. Season 31 uh, of the Blacklist right now. Yeah. Thank I you all to, so much for... the other guy. Make him a Brainiac. If we yeah. have to do cape shit, if we have to put... If we must. Machine, uh, I listen, um, Brainiac, dude, you put some fucking respect on Brainiac's name. That he's, guy, he's actually my favorite Superman he's villain. He's the best Superman yeah. villain. He's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. I'm going to end the episode now. Hey, I'm ending, on, I'm ending it. Uh, uh, thank, you guys, on, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you want more, you can peruse our back catalog on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and the Podbean app. Rate and review us wherever you get us, and have a happy holiday season, a beautiful new year. We will see you in January with our uh, our best of 2023 episode. All right? Um, until then, keep watching movies. Yeah. Keep recording videos. Yeah. And vote Zach for president. Thanks. Because I, <laughs> I will use that presidency to play them. <laughs>